Some people want to go by their IG number. Handles. Yeah, but then people be calling themselves like ecom underscore emp- emperor, yeah. and it's like you dug yourself a grave. I tell everybody, you might as well go with your real name because, like for example, my friend David, I told him that from the start. He he because he's going by like Monetary Ocean, so like when I had Monetary him on, Ocean, yeah. So okay. when I had him on the podcast, uh, that's his personal. That's his personal, but it, his real name's David Mueller. But he also goes by David Mueller of Monetary Ocean, but all of his profiles are Monetary Ocean. So like when I had him on the podcast, I like said David Mueller and then like the comments to Monetary Ocean. So yeah. It's like one of those common things because I think sometime in the like late 2000s, early, like when social media came around, I think people started realizing that people become more attached to personal brands than brands. Yes. Yes. So putting that brand divider, I don't think it's a good idea. Also, especially when you're naming yourself, like everyone, you know, in our space at least is doing like e-com. And yeah. then, like for me, it would be the e-com Noah, just an example. But what if I don't do e-com in a year from now and then I'm stuck with that handle? Or even if I switch my handle to something, people are going to know me as e-com Noah. Yeah. I don't want that to be my name. Like when people say Noah, they say Noah Tuck mm-hmm. or Noah Tucker, but like Noah Tuck is still me. It's still my name. That could be, you know, anything. Like, Noah Tuck. Yeah. Do you know Ecom Lifestyle? I do. I do. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. like, not like super personally, but I actually worked with him for a little bit. He's from St. Louis. Okay. The way I met him was I was walking with my friend Jacob back from Forest Park and literally I like get to the crosswalk and then I like turn around. And I'm like, damn, that's some thick tent on the this v, VW, this Volkswagen. And I'm looking at the tent and the window rolls down and it's ecom lifestyle. Did you know him already? Like, have you connected on IG before? He had that? messaged me a bunch of times on Instagram, but I never like got around to respond. Okay. This is around the time when I stopped responding to every DM. Okay. So he kind of like fell on that. And I, and I was like, I didn't know his name. I was just like, ecom lifestyle. Dude, I, I, wait, let me, could I tell you his name right now? I don't, it's Christian. Okay. I yeah. don't think I could have told you that. I don't think I could have told you. Cause dude, that's how I, like even my close friends, like we always, like I have this, I'm close friends with this kid, Wi-Fi Daniel. Oh yeah. That's not his name, obviously, but yeah. I call him that. And it's to the point where like everyone calls him that, like that caught on and that's his name now. Like when people meet him, I introduce him as Wi-Fi Daniel and he's like, cool with that. Like it, it started out as a little bit of a joke almost making fun of him a little bit because in my opinion that's a ridiculous username i would never <laughs> do that but i love the kid that's the kid that we saw at the pizza place that oh, was really? running oh, by really? that came and said what's up yeah i bet it when he gets older he's gonna be wi-fi dan wi-fi dan wi-fi dan. i mean that's what i call so I, I just call him wi-fi now oh I just say okay. wi-fi yo wi-fi like got that wi-fi the wi-fi uh what's that 21 jump street remember when they're all selling the wi-fi have you ever seen that dude the, the drugs call i have wi-fi. like a weird thing with movies that my brain like erases the memory of them after i watch what it. i'm not even joking like i think my brain categorizes things as levels of importance and it knows the movie's made up and i'm i love watching movies i'm enjoying i enjoy watching them but afterwards like very very quickly like within a week i really can't recall scenes and i'll watch a movie with someone else and they'll be making references to the scene to like to a funny scene that's like similar to something that's happening in, the, in real life and I'll literally be like, I don't remember that happening. Weird. Yeah. I have a weird thing with movies. I, it's not so much anymore, but there's a period where it's like, I think it was when I got into the e-com space and I realized how many fucking fake people there are. They're like truly like outside of e-com, like all, anyone in like- If you just go on, it's, spend five minutes on Instagram, you'll find a lot of them. Like the people who are only on Instagram and like yes. they, they're able to hide behind that curtain. Yeah. Like I, w- I became so about keeping it real, keeping it authentic, yeah. that I couldn't even watch a movie because I'm like, these fucking people are acting. Dude, I'll get, I'll be watching a movie and I'll get into the mindset of like thinking how they're on a set. Yeah. Like, and they probably practiced these lines a hundred times and they probably did this exact scene I'm watching 10 times before this one take that was good enough to like get produced. Exactly. And then I'm like, this is, why am I wasting my time looking at this screen right now? Yeah. But, it is, but like also once I get into it, then it obviously is entertaining. Yeah. Anyway, so we're out here in Florida. And it's been raining like crazy. Have you ever seen this much rain recently? This is very, very typical Miami weather. It'll like be oh. raining for like a couple hours and then be sunny for a couple hours and then just kind of go back and forth throughout the day. That's like very normal. I haven't seen the sun one time since I've been Have here. Have you not? Three days so far. No sun. I, I got like, here Monday. Okay. That's, yeah, that's bad luck. And it's, it's been, luck. it's like, I guess right now it's not too much pouring. It's not but too bad. It was earlier today. It was like all day and all night. Yeah. Really? Was it all night? All night because that Airbnb I was telling you about, yeah, yeah. the the good room, it doesn't, the doors don't lock all the way. So when it's windy, it feels like someone's oh, breaking in. And so it, I always feel like the, an intruder is about to come. I, that's, that's surprising considering like in Florida, every house like has to be hurricane proof. 
Oh, really? And that does not sound hurricane proof if it's shaking from a little windstorm that happens every other day. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, they have, there's some sketchy things going Seems on. Seems like there's that. a lot going on with that Airbnb. For sure. There's a lot of weird things. Put me in a bad mood for a bit, but among other things, as you know, yeah, but yeah. that we're all past that. Now tell me, you got an adri- you started all of this with drop shipping, right? Drop shipping was, yeah, the first the like, Twitter. business venture that I did, yeah. Was it POD? It was not. No, it was just straight up drop shipping. So I was, this was, all right, so the first drop shipping store like I ever built, it was right after my, I graduated my senior year of high school, got accepted into University of Miami, which was my dream school forever. Like that was the only school I ever wanted to apply to. Yeah. Just graduated from high school, living in New Jersey, about to go to University of Miami, starting the life. I was super excited. And I was working a job at the time on a fishing boat. Fishing was like my huge, I mean, it still is, but like of the time before business came around, like fishing was my big passion. Is there a big fishing scene in New Jersey? Um, I mean, it's bigger here in Florida. The fishing is like, Florida is like the fishing capital of the world, apparently. Yeah. But, uh, New Jersey, I mean, yeah, I mean, I lived right, like right by the beach, like literally a five minute drive from the beach. So fishing was like always a part of my life. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so I was working on a fishing boat, which was actually a terrible job. It was literally 12 hour, 13 hour shift some days in the hot sun. And it was one of those like, ma- like big party boats that would have like 60 people on it all lined up next to each other. And I was that fool running around cutting bait and like untangling people's lines and just uh cutting fish and just, for how much an hour so the hourly rate was like tw- 12 bucks an hour Ooh. i want to say but tips really good tips oh that's good so yeah so i would get like 30 percent of the tips for the day because there was like another guy who was helping like do all the stuff and he was like more senior than me that guy is also the only person still to this day that i could say that i hate Oh my I've, God. I've never hated someone in my life. I'm just not a hateful person. Even if people do me wrong, I always look at it as a lesson. Yeah. I hate this guy. He was nothing but cruel to me. Oh, yeah. And I I showed, I was so kind to him, and he just literally like had it out for me for whatever reason, and he tried to get me fired so many times. Thankfully, the captain of the boat, who was my actual boss, loved me. So like that was never an issue. That's but good. Anyways, working on a fishing boat. And I'm at my friend Tyler's house and his buddy, Andrew, Andrew McCarthy. I know, I think you know who he Shout is. Shout out Andrew. Shout out Andrew. And, and also this other kid, Amit. I don't know if you know Amit Greenstein. Or oh, Greenstein. the hedge fund manager. Yeah, so they, they're, they're, yeah. they co-own that. So they were over at Tyler's house. Um, Tyler's like the one who introduced me to them. They were friends from back home. And Tyler and I went to high school together. They were over and we were just catching up. They would come every year and we'd go fishing. Um, but they were telling me about how they were making money. And usually they were just like playing around with Robin Hood like every other year that I'd met them. But this time <laughs> they, were, they, they told me about Shopify and how they had their own business. And I was like, this is the fucking coolest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. So they told me that they had like, they each had their own store. Me and Andrew each had their own store that were selling like bikinis and rompers. Um, and I, Such to, a classic to me, Dr. V Yeah, story. to me, I was like, you don't know shit about women's clothing. Like, how could that be the business venture you take? And they were just like, it just sells really well. And I was like, fair enough. So I was like, how much are you making? And they're like, a couple hundred bucks a day. And I was like, what's the work you're doing? And they're just like, we just run the Instagram accounts. That's it. There's no Facebook ads. There was oh, no, wow. nothing, bro. Just, so they own the influencer pages? There was no influencer page. Wait, oh, the Instagram account. They, for the they shop. made a brand page for the stores. Wow. And they would do giveaways. I mean, they were very active on it. And it was with their own, they were doing it themselves. They didn't have bots or anything at the time. We didn't even know about that stuff. This is like 2016, 2017, Damn. I want to say. So they were doing all that. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I was like, I said to them, I was like, look, I'm sure you get this all the time. But if you show me how you set up the store, I promise you, I will not let you down as far as like following through with it. Because I'm sure everyone is like, oh, that seems cool. Like, I want to do that. And then they show them like how to set it up. And then they just kind of, you know, realize it's hard and give up. I was like, that's not me. I will go hard as fuck on this. Just please show me like the basics of how to set it up. So really all they taught me was, they didn't even teach me. They just told me about Shopify and Oberlo. They just, they're like, look up Shopify and Oberlo. I was like, okay, I have a place to start. So I went home that day and I was super excited. I was calling my mom. I was like, mom, I'm going to start a business. And she's like, good, good job. Hell I just, yeah, I just like everyone, I was just super, like I was on a cloud that day. I was like, I found something because 200 bucks a day would mean I could quit, easily quit my uh, fishing boat job, Definitely. which was torture at the time because this one dude that hated me for whatever reason was literally trying to make my life hell. And I was working 13 hour shifts, not getting any sleep. Fuck and I was like, this just, this just doesn't feel right. Like it just didn't feel right. So I was like, this is my ticket out of this. So Tyler and I partnered up on a store and we were like, let's do bikinis and rompers because that's what we know works. So we made a clothing brand. We called it Anna Clara Clothing and it was very simple shop, Fio Berlo, like out of the textbook setup, just like very straightforward. 
Um, and we want the whole thing is gonna be like Brazilian style bikinis and rompers because I'm half Brazilian. My mom is fully Brazilian, so she was gonna like help us name the clothing like Brazilian names and stuff and just like keep it a Brazilian theme. So we built the store. I pretty much did all the work, honestly. Like I built, I uh, imported the products through Oberlo, just like made a very out like textbook drop shipping store. Just like exactly what you would expect. Like whatever you're yeah. picturing is what it is. Um, and basically, we didn't know about Facebook ads. We didn't know about like a Twitter method, which I'll I'll touch on later. But we didn't know about any like traffic methods. We just had a Shopify store. It probably took us like two weeks to build the whole thing. And we were just like, okay, now we need visitors, obviously. So we were just like, let's just do what Andrew and Amit do. So I made an Instagram account, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna stick to this. Like I made I made a set of rules that I'm gonna follow with the account, and I'm, I was like, I'm gonna stick to this. Three feed posts a day, two stories a day, recruiting ambassadors, and then. Every hour we had, I literally had a timer set on my phone every hour on the hour. I would follow people that followed similar brands until Instagram blocked me, yeah. then unfollow people from an earlier batch that I followed until Instagram would block me from doing that. And then DM people, just random people to be ambassadors, like a copy and paste message. I was doing this with my own two thumbs. Like I wasn't like using any of these like Jarvi bots or anything. I was literally just doing this until Instagram blocked me from doing that. So this was your only traffic source? Was just, yeah, was just following and unfollowing people with my own thumbs. Classic. I'm not, and posting three times a day, I was doing giveaways. I would do like a free plus shipping Friday or something like that. I literally did that every day that entire summer without one day off. Like timer set on my phone, following people, unfollowing all day? people all day. There, I remember there was one day that my dad bought me a, for my graduation gift. He was going to take me out tuna fishing, which was like the best gift you could ever give me like at the time. Like, like that this, was, Are they like big or like the size of this table? Uh, a little tuna. smaller, a little okay. smaller. Like like they were bluefin tuna, which get like those are the ones that you see in Wicked Tuna that get like crazy. Yeah. Big. But these were like, you know. You say Wicked Tuna? Wicked Tuna. You don't what, know. It's a, that? that's a, TV a TV show, show about yeah. tuna fish? Yeah, yeah. Damn, people go hard for the tuna. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that was like the best graduation gift I could have ever asked for. So I was super excited, but I was like, I was in charge of running the Instagram and I was going to miss my three feed posts for the day or two, whatever it was and sto two stories and all the DMs. And I was like, Tyler, I need you to like take over today. I remember while I was out there fishing, still having fun. I was stressed out of my mind that Tyler was going to forget one post or one DM or anything. Cause I was just so unbelievably consistent with it. Yeah. That the thought, the thought of, and the thought of like missing that, could like would ruin it, even though it didn't really matter. Like it, in my head, I was like, it has to be, per it has to be perfect, it has to be perfect. So this was all happening before we even officially like launched the store. We were like, let's build up some hype and like, so yeah, so I guess, so yeah, so we did do that for a while, but before we even launched it, we were already doing this method of like following and unfollowing people and getting people to be ambassadors so that we could like have a hype launch so that when we did launch, like we, we wanted to get a bunch of sales up front, like that was like a big goal for ours. So. I remember coming back from the tuna trip and I went to Tyler's work where he was and it was like I was like sunburned as fuck like my face was completely red from fishing all day he was at work he worked at a tennis club and I went there and we we're like all right let's launch it right now like we have we had like 400 followers or something on Instagram we had a bunch of people that were going to be ambassadors we, we made discount codes for all of them. oh so you didn't even launch the store yet this was all just like pre yeah we, we we did a lot to like hype up the launch. gotcha okay and then we launched it and we DM'd every single ambassador we had. We did a big Instagram post. We saw, we saw some visitors go to the store. We got so excited. We saw some add to carts and then no one bought anything. And yeah. we, were like, we were like, oh no, we didn't set up the payment processor right. We're like, something, something must be wrong. Like they were definitely going to buy. So then we looked and we tested it and everything was working fine. And we went as far as DMing each ambassador that we sent a discount code to saying, why didn't you buy? And they were all just like, you know, they just had whatever reasons like, oh, like my mom said I couldn't or something like ridiculous. But we realized it was going to be a little harder to get our first sale than we yeah. thought. So basically we keep doing that posting strategy. I was explaining for another like week and then we did get our first sale. Just someone found it on Instagram and bought it. And I remember that moment super clearly. I was in the car and I was just like freaking out because I was like, no fucking first way. Sale. This is crazy. Yeah. I was like, there's no way this is happening right now. Like, this is like actually real. And then we continue just doing literally that, just that follow and follow strategy for that entire summer um, in the DMing. And we did probably that summer going uh, into my freshman year in college, we probably did like $3,000 in sales, 4,000. But you got to keep in mind, that's mostly profit because we had big, oh, yeah. mar big margins and no traffic costs. Yeah. So I probably made like, we probably each took home like a little over $1,000 in our pocket. And I was like, this is awesome. Like, this That's is so much. In this college. is really awesome. Like, this is really all my friends thought it was the coolest thing. All my friends that were girls wanted me to like do photo shoots of them wearing the bikinis and stuff. Like, everyone knew about it. Like, everyone thought it was cool. I was having so much fun building it. And I was like, I want to turn this into a huge brand. So basically, I get to college 
And I'm still doing that. Obviously, like freshman year at University of Miami, like I'm having a great time. I'm going out. But I, I'm, I'm, my heart is still in the business. And I'm telling my new college friends about it. And one of the kids I'm talking to, like literally during orientation week, he's like, oh, you do drop shipping? Like I do that too. And I was like, no way. Like I didn't think anyone else knew about this. Like literally Andrew and me told me about it and I didn't know anyone else. I thought like it was like the biggest finesse ever that they figured out. And I was like, my mind was blown that other people did it. What was his name? William Varesco. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> his yeah. current roommate. Current roommate four years later or whatever. But so he was like, yeah, I do drop shipping. And he's like, and we were just like talking about it. And he was telling me that he did a thousand dollars in a day. And I was like, yeah. are you fucking kidding me? A thousand dollars in a day. I'd be the richest fucker in this entire school. Like a thousand dollars in a day. That's crazy. I was like, how did you do that? And he basically told me about this Twitter method um, that I know I've explained to you. I've, I've talked about it on a couple other videos before, but basically you can buy ad spots from people who own a ton of big Twitter accounts and they'll retweet your tweets when your tweets are the ads drive traffic to your store. He said he was doing that for, he had like a jewelry drop shipping brand and he was doing like a thousand dollars a day. And I was like, dude, can you connect me to these Twitter people? Like I need to try this for my uh, clothing brand. So he connected me to one and I like told Tyler about it and Tyler was like super on the fence about it because we had to spend a minimum of $300 which was like on on the ad and that was like that was for like a million impressions and that was like already a week's worth that would be like a week's worth of profit deleted if it didn't work mm -hmm. so we were very skeptical to try it we didn't want to just blow $300 like that but I convinced Tyler I was like dude I met this kid at, at Miami he does a thousand dollars a day we have to try this like the worst thing it could do is like we break even like there's no way this is going to be that wait bad. so you and tyler are partners on the store right on that first store yeah so how how did that partnership even work we were just 50 50 50 50 yeah like and 50 50 work too uh i definitely did more work okay yeah. and, and uh, like i don't even feel bad saying that because i feel like if you asked him he'd be like yeah no it did way more work like my yeah. heart was just so in it like he was also way busier with his school like he went to university of michigan um and he was just like super super swamped i remember like he was like my best friend in high school so we would talk all the time and he was like in over his head with business and like with schoolwork. And for me, like really wasn't that bad at Miami. And I was just like, and also I was just so obsessed with the business that like you couldn't like, I was just like, I wanted to work on it at every moment I had. And for him, it was more of a like, like forcing himself to do work. I think it was like just a different mindset going into right. it. Anyways, I convinced him to do it. We run the ad spots. Um, I like literally made a little, I made a Twitter account, posted a tweet. I was like, all of our bikinis are on sale today or something like that. And, and the link and like a few pictures of the bikinis. And so we spent like $300 and we only did like 50 to a hundred in sales. So it's big L there. And Tyler was pissed. And I was like, dude, I'm sorry, but it was still worth trying. Um, and he was like, whatever. Yeah. Like, like whatever, live and learn. It wasn't like a big deal. So for another month, I'd say I went back to just doing that, uh, method of just following and unfollowing people like how I, come you didn't even think about facebook up. ads i didn't i've never heard of facebook ads. wow yeah like, even in your research you didn't find maybe i heard facebook. about it briefly but like it was not anything i was thinking of at the time did like, you like youtube a drop shipping tutorial yeah was it dan de silva's no 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 really that's the that's the first and only drop shipping tutorial i ever watched was dan de silva i don't think i watched like a full tutorial because like andrew and me kind of gave me the basics and mm -hmm. then I, i'm a very big like trial and error learn by doing guy yeah so i don't even like i'd rather like make mistakes sometimes and just like learn from that because then it's really ingrained in my head gotcha um but basically we went back yeah we literally went back and we were still just doing like a hundred ish dollars a day just like following and unfollowing people and i was like whatever this is how it's going to be i guess and we'll just slowly grow um, we had like probably like seven to 10,000 followers on the account at that time. So it was definitely growing pretty fast just from following and unfollowing people. But I remember one day I was sitting in my dorm right after I was doing homework or something and I'm scrolling through uh, Facebook and Instagram, like either Facebook or Instagram. And I keep getting an ad and they're all different stores, but I keep getting an ad for a free watch. So oh, many man. times this day did I get an ad for a free watch that on brings me back. Facebook and Instagram. And I was like, what is going on here? Like what? is the deal with this free watch. So I click on one of the ads and I go through the funnel and I see that they charge like the $9 shipping or whatever. I was like, oh, this is what they're doing. Cause I had already had tried free plus shipping on the bikini store. So I knew like the concept of how to profit off that. And I was like, this is really smart. I looked at their store, everything was free and they were just doing that. And I was like, this is genius. I was like, I was like, we need to, so I called Tyler. I was like, we need to convert our bikini store into a free plus shipping store. We need to make everything free and just charge like 12 to $13 shipping. And then, and then I was like, we need to run the ads on Twitter and do it, do it all again, but free plus shipping. 
And then Tyler was like, hell no, Twitter doesn't work. We already tried it. We're not doing it again. We already lost $300. I don't want to lose $600. And I was like, like we actually got into a huge fight. I remember we were on the phone. I think we were like saying like, fuck you to each other. It's Cause I was so persistent and I just knew this was going to work yeah. and he would not do it, but we're 50, 50 partners. I couldn't do it without him. So I was like, fuck it. That night I literally just sat in, in like our dorm study room and I banged out a, a, a watch free plus shipping store using Shopify and Overlo. And all watches, all watches. Yeah. Just exactly what I saw. So, oh, okay. I, so I copied this is that a separate, separate, separate store. Okay. I made a new store by myself and I was like, this is gonna be my store. And I, and I, uh, yeah, I literally copied the store that I saw from the Facebook ad, exa- like pretty much exactly. And I was like, I'm going to do exactly what these people are doing on Facebook and Instagram, but on Twitter. And this was, this is pretty much, this is like my first aha moment, like when this all clicked together. So I remember I set it up with, this, with the same influencer guy. And now this is $300 of my own personal money. So I'm really taking a risk. And yeah, and I was like super scared. I pay the guy the next morning. I, I'm at ultimate Frisbee practice for University <laughs> of Miami. I didn't know you played ultimate Frisbee. I, I like super didn't like, I just joined because like I was just joining random clubs at University of Miami. That mm-hmm. was one that I stuck with. It wasn't like serious or anything, but it was fun. You play Frisbee golf too? No. Oh, you got to no. get into Frisbee golf. I should, I should. But uh, I remember after Frisbee practice, I look at my phone and there's like a ton of notifications for sales. And I'm like, oh my God, the ads must have started delivering. And I was like freaking out. I run upstairs, get out my laptop and I'm already at like $800 in sales or something. And I was like, holy shit. Like I literally figured something out. So that by the end of that day, I probably did like a thousand in sales and, you know, spent like 250 on the impressions. And I was like, okay, I figured something out. Like this is profitable. And I remember I sent Andrew McCarthy a screenshot of that Shopify dashboard with a thousand dollar day. And he was like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? You need to teach me this. Oh, so you hit a thousand before Andrew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I showed Andrew and he was like, dude, you need to show me this. So I told, since he like, since he was the one that showed me drop shipping, I was like, I'm going to tell him everything I'm doing. Student becomes a teacher. Yeah. I mean, briefly. So I, <laughs> so I called him and I told him everything. And then he went and copied that store. Exactly. Oh. And then Fez made the store. Oh, Everyone no. made this free plus shipping watch store, but it was me that like, and then they all also advertised with the same guy from Twitter. Like if you talk to them, they'll tell you about like this Twitter error that all started from my roommate telling me about it, telling to yeah. tell them about it. Um, but whatever, I honestly wasn't too mad about it. Cause I was like, this guy also taught me drop shipping. Like right. if he wants to copy it my store. It wouldn't have happened without him. Yeah, exactly. So Ran that watch store for a while, for maybe like a month. I did probably like 40000 on it, maybe like 10 k profit. Damn. And I thought I was just, I thought I was on top of the world. Freshman University of Miami, 10 k in my bank account. I'm like, I'm chilling right now. I was literally going out. Like, you can retire. Going out like, yeah, literally, <laughs> bro. I was going out every night. I was buying people drinks, paying for the Ubers. Like just thinking that I'm set, like I'm on now. And I actually developed a spending habit so bad that my bank account went negative. And I what? Was, yeah. And how long after the ten thousand? Like not long. Like I was spending while I was making it too. Like I was like a couple months. Less. Less than a couple yeah, months. I blew One it. month. I blew through it. I in a month. It. Yeah, at least. Oh my! Like, well, I guess you're, you're in Miami, so I'm in Miami, bro. That's a little yeah. different. You can easily spend ten thousand like, dollars. Like I was just it, I, like it, it just money seemed unlimited at the time. It yeah. was an illusion. You're printing it. That's what it felt like. Online ATM machine. Federal Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> so. I was like, okay, I need to not do this anymore. So I ended up closing that store down because I never tried Facebook ads. I never knew about Facebook ads. I was just doing Twitter and it wasn't getting me too far. Um, Like it started to die down and there was nothing more I could do. So close that store down. Um, And then basically I was like, all right, I need to make a new store and I need to do something more sustainable. So I made a new store. And I knew Facebook ads was the answer to my problems. I just didn't know what to do. So I watched a YouTube video. It was by a guy named Teo Vanyo. I don't, he's like not that big, but for, he made a really good YouTube video back then about just a very simple f- Facebook ad testing strategy. And I watched it and it made perfect sense to me. And I was like, I need a consulting call with this guy. So that's, so it was around Christmas time now, my freshman year in college. I asked my parents for Christmas, can you buy me a 30 minute consulting call? Tay of Vanya. How like, much was it? It was like 200 bucks. That was like my only Christmas present, but they got me that. And I was super, wow. exci- I was super excited. And I had, I had that 30 minute call, not like a, a week or whatever later. And this guy literally, like, it was just perfect timing. Everything clicked into place. He told me exactly what I, like, I never ran a Facebook ad before, but I got, like, the concept of it. And he literally just told me everything I needed to hear to, like, get to that next level, like, just to, like, run something successfully. Like, he just told me exactly what I needed to hear. So, basically, it was, like, a a testing strategy and a lookalike audience strategy. Very basic. And 
I made a new store. I started with Twitter and I got enough data from Twitter to do his lookalike strategy without ever doing his Facebook testing strategy. And I made lookalikes with his, from the Twitter data. And how'd you have the Twitter data? Where'd because you... I ran Twitter ads for this next product, like the Twitter, imp- like the ad spot. And you can use that for the audiences on well, Facebook? No, but I had a pixel on there. You had the, a Twitter pixel? Facebook, Facebook pixel. pixel. On the way. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you get okay. what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I did, the, I just ran Twitter until I had enough by just by what Teo told me would be enough to make lookalikes and then I made lookalikes and they did crazy good like two dollar cost for purchases across oh, yeah. the board I was just scaling it like crazy and I was like all right now I have shit figured out but I didn't know how to keep Facebook ads long term sustainable anyway so that store ended up dying out after like two months but I was really like I was just learning a lot and this is right around the time I started to realize that there's a whole community of people online that do this like I remember I found Tanner Plain's YouTube channel and Savas's channel and I was like, oh, there's other people that do this. And like, I remember watching Save Asses and Tanner's videos and being like, these guys are fucking legends. Like, I need to meet these yeah. guys. Now they're all the boys. It's the craziest it's thing It's weird. Ever. I remember watching Save Ass all the time. Now I live with him in LA. Yeah, literally. I remember watching Dan Da Silva. And now I collab with him on a project. It's crazy. I remember Jared's ads very specifically. Yep. I just got done playing Top Golf with Jared before I came <laughs> it's here. Crazy. It's, it's crazy. It's very strange. Life definitely changes like fast sometimes, but... Yeah, so I realized there was this whole community out there of people that do the same thing. And I was like, I need to learn what all these guys are doing. So I, I came up with a plan. I made a Facebook, or I made an Instagram page that was like elite underscore Shopify dropshippers or so, something along the line that like it was supposed to be look like it was an exclusive Shopify dropshipper community for only the successful people. And I followed other people that I knew were successful and, and myself. And basically you started DMing these people. I was like, oh, I see this page follows you. Like we should like connect. And I tried to make it like I was also part of this exclusive community. Yeah. And it worked. And I started DMing these people and I was like, let's get on a call. And basically it was just a very simple value exchange in every call. Nobody had ever heard of my Twitter method. So I would call these people and I would teach them this Twitter method. And in return, they would give me some piece of Facebook ad knowledge or something. But I was giving away the same Twitter method to everyone I spoke to, and they were all teaching me new stuff. And I started learning a ton about Facebook ads from all of these different people that were doing the same thing I was doing. And then I was so like I learned a ton from that. And then I just started like building a personal brand. I like I, I didn't know what I was doing, but I wanted to like make more money by coaching people. So I started running like an uh, Instagram story. I had to just gain followers, and like if people DM me, I would like figure out some sort of coaching package. But it was completely unorganized, and I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. So I stopped that real quick because it was just not sustainable, and it was taking up too much of my time. And yeah, I mean that's like that's like basically how it got started. I mean, obviously there's a lot more since then, but that's uh, that's like when I started meeting people. Like I met Tanner not too long after because I was like gaining followers, and like people started to find out. I was posting my screenshots too. People were seeing I was doing really good numbers. Um, and I was teaching people out Twitter, so people would fuck with me. Like I would teach them something that they've never heard about before. Everyone was teaching the same Facebook ad strategies. I had something new, so people thought it was really unique. And I just kind of started networking from there. Yeah, the value exchange is important. Very because a lot of people they, it's because if you didn't have that to offer, would you no, think these no one's going to give me anything? Yeah. yeah, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want anything because that just feels wrong. Like I'm not there to. I hate the you know this phrase like let me pick your brain or whatever. Like yeah, obviously that probably gives you chills from the amount of times you've seen it in your DMs. It's it's probably way worse than mine. I mean, your DMs are probably way worse than mine, but I just hate that whole like taking without giving kind of mentality. Yeah. Especially if I don't know you. Like if you're like a childhood friend, like you're getting put on. But like I had someone text me yesterday. He was in that fraternity I joined for a short little period. Yep. He was four, three years older than me. We never had any in-person conversations and he's been hitting me up all the time as if we were buddies or something. I never even spoke to this guy before. He also mentioned he's a financial advisor, of course. You ever have financial advisors from your past life hit you up? I don't think any, I'm a little younger than you still. I don't think like is my, if I were to stay in college, I would be a senior right now. So most of my friends like haven't gotten to the point where they would be able to. It's coming. It's, but it's on the way, I guess. On the way, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. So you dropped out of college. I did after my freshman year. Yeah. So I wasn't even making a lot of money actually. But you stayed, you stayed living in college though. Cause when I met you, you're still there. So, well, basically it wasn't technically on campus but it was based it was like right off campus it yeah. was all college students yeah yeah so after my freshman year i w- i really wasn't making a lot of money i was just fi- i was just grinding like i was just really grinding like just every day like i would just like sit on my laptop and just grind like i would just try everything i could think of and i came up with like the motto of just test it like almost like nike's just do it if i think of something that could potentially work test it everything like there's no reason not to test especially from a marketing perspective like if you're not testing things like even just with facebook ads as simple as like testing audiences if you're not testing everything then you're not 
you're not getting a big enough sample size to make effective decisions. So I just really got the mentality in my head to just test everything I thought of. And I was just grinding, like not even making money, but grinding. Yeah. And I knew that I didn't want to go back to school. I was already deep in the whole community of these online entrepreneurs and I was in love with it. And I was just, it was like a lot of conversations with my parents, but basically what we agreed upon is that I'll take a semester off because I would technically be allowed to go back to college after. So they were, in their heads, they were like, okay, he's going to go back after one semester. But to me, I was like, I am out of here. Yeah, when I dropped out, I just told my parents, no conversations at all. I mean, yeah. This is what's happening. It was weird because when I woke up that morning, I had no intentions of dropping out. Oh, really? By 1 p.m., I already convinced myself. Okay, it was definitely more of a gradual process for me. Yeah, it was weird because it was it was just the influence of going to Los Angeles, like my first big city, living there for three months, and then coming back. Okay, and I'm like, I'm once you is, see it, once you get the taste, yeah, you you get hooked. I'm like, there's no way that I, I go to I there's no way I drop out, go to L.A. and not become successful. I knew it's not one of those things where it's like I was telling myself I'm gonna do it. I already, I knew for a fact. I knew for a fact. It already happened. Just time hadn't caught up. Exactly. It's already the reality of my brain. Fuck manifestation, bitch. This is reality. <laughs> and that, that is what manifestation is. No. Okay. So manifestation puts a, that word. Yeah. It's a barrier between your thoughts and reality. I don't know what you guys are talking about when you're talking about manifestation because my thoughts are my reality. It's not my thoughts are manifesting into reality. Okay. okay. My thoughts are reality. Okay. Fair enough. I feel like when I'm talking about manifestation... Even though, like, that's probably technically correct, but I'm thinking the same way you are, that, like, my thoughts, yeah. like, it's already happened and time hasn't caught up yet. Like, I, I definitely believe in that kind well, of thing. I think it's kind of similar to the I am, I'm statement. Like, in the new versions of the Bible, they took out all the I ams, or a lot of them, and a lot of weird, like, information that was really powerful, and they turned it to I'm. Okay. Because I am is the biggest, most powerful statement that any human can even consider. And so when you say I'm, like say um, I'm a millionaire. Or say you want to be a professional singer. I'm a professional singer. I am a professional I singer. I am yeah. a professional it's like, singer. It's like fact. It's, it's just like engraved in a tablet. It right? triggers something in the brain that, I feel that. I'm doesn't. So, so what's, when, your, what's your theory on that being removed from the Bible? I, I was actually told this um, by one of my mentors slash friends. He said that it was just a way to weaken people. Okay. It was just a way to weaken people. And there's so many things because someone else I know knows someone who worked at the Vatican for a while. And I wish I could share the stories of, because they have a mile long secret basement. Have you, did you know that? No. So they have a mile underneath of the Vatican and it's a secret library that nobody's allowed to go into. The, the library of Alexandria burned down in 1300, 1200. So we lost all, a lot of information. All that information is backed up in the bottom of the Vatican. Interesting. So what are they hiding? I'm starting to get very questionable at the Vatican. There's okay. a lot of sketchy things that go on there, for sure. Interesting. If you really look deep into it. I have not. Well, like the, the Pope stepped down for the first time in history recently. What's that about, you know? Dude, I don't know. <laughs> there's a, there, I get into conspiracies sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of conspiracies surrounding that, dude. Yeah. But one conspiracy, my conspiracy with Miami is that all of these buildings were built by the people who smuggled cocaine in the 80s. Okay, I mean, Brickle specifically, yeah. this is like, these buildings are all like three years old. Yeah. Oh, you still think? I still oh, think okay. so. Okay. I was talking to my friend about that last night. I'm like, damn, Miami sure does have a lot of really rich people. Yeah. And it's very, confu like, it's very confusing how a lot of these people have money. You ever notice that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, but I feel like they're just doing like, really sketchy stuff like exactly but yeah. like not, like not like as like robust as like bringing cocaine to the yeah. united states well like, i think those people all started going in investment around here because like miami used to be a retirement home basically yeah yeah until like the late 70s when castro sent the i think it was like ten thousand, right cubans i think ten thousand or a hundred thousand of the the worst people in his country all the criminals, the oh, rapists. Okay, okay. I forget the deal he had with the United States. He claimed they were refugees or they claimed they were refugees. Okay. But he finessed the United States and literally just sent the worst of the worst from the country okay. over. Okay. Which is why they came in Isn't here. Isn't that like what Australia is to like the UK? I don't know. Like I Australia, know nothing about that. I think I could be too I could be totally wrong on this. I think Australia was like originally like an island for prisoners from England. What? Yeah. When was this? 
Dude, I have no idea. This is like what Will t- tells me. He's dating an Australian, so like he gets all the news. Damn. So it's like a large Alcatraz island. Yeah, yeah. And Australia is a co- country, right? Yeah, and a continent. And a continent? I think so, yeah. Is it the only country continent? I believe so. I believe so. It's possible for a continent to be a country? I mean, we could definitely Google this. I know some, some people are listening to this <laughs> some right people now. Are like, like, what these are you guys, guys talking need about? need to go back to college <laughs> right now. <laughs> We went from talking about the Vatican to drug smuggling <laughs> to to geography really quick. Real quick. So you so how how have you liked living in Miami? Okay, especially when you didn't have too much money to making a lot of money cuz yeah, so I feel like Miami's way funner when you have the money to blow. Definitely. It's definitely a city as Los Angeles is probably a little less so in Miami that like yeah, obviously mo- like money is king and like there's a lot you can't do without it. Um so yeah, so like I so after I dropped out I finally convinced my parents, like I wasn't even officially dropped out. I was taking a semester off on paper, but in my brain, I was very dropped out. Me and all my buddies from college, like we got, like four of us got an apartment right next to campus together. And like, that was so fine with me. Like not only was it cheap, but I did not want to give up the college lifestyle. Right. Like just because I'm not taking classes doesn't mean I don't want to have fun. Like, I don't know why that people always like associate this too. They're like, oh, if you're not like, they're like, oh, you have to like give up drinking and partying and having fun. I'm like, fuck that. Like, I'm still trying to live my life and like do fun shit with my friends. I loved all my college friends. Like I'm still close with all, like literally all of them. But class wasn't for me. Like that was the difference. Like while they were in class, I was sitting home grinding. Like, but besides that, what was we, your GPA? We still saw eye to eye. Oh, it was, it was high. It was high. I don't remember exactly. I mean, in, in high school, it was like 4.1 or something yeah. out of like a, a weighted scale or whatever. But I definitely took school seriously. I, like I wasn't one of those kids that like knew that they were going to do something like this and like was just like kind of fucking around in school and just like grinding. Like in high school, I was a good student for sure. Like, and it was just because I wanted to go to University of Miami so bad and I knew I had to have good grades. Right. So I literally like that was the only motive in my head. And since that was like, since I put my mind to that, like I was going to do that, like make that happen no matter what. So gotcha. I was definitely a good student. Yeah. You no, know, Sebas had a 5.5 GPA. Really? Yeah. I could see that. I just realized something. Uh, we never, we didn't turn these on this table. Oh, should we? Might as well. I think we need to, uh, we need to is it a process? Uh, well, there's that cord behind you. Oh. You'd have to plug that into the box underneath one of these legs. Oh, there we go. Damn. Now we're really in Miami. Yeah, very exhilarating. Got my Tesla cup. Yep. And you're basically dropped out at this point, living the college lifestyle. At that point, yeah. Where'd you take it from here? Because that's, is that around when I met you or did you stay there for a while? That, well, you didn't meet me like the first time we met. I don't know if you remember, but it was like right outside that apartment. Yeah, no, I remember that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was right when we met. Um, Yeah, so I was just grinding, but I really wasn't making a lot. Like I was grinding and I was making enough to like pay my rent and pay for food. But that was really it. Like I re- I wasn't like stacking cash at all. Um, and that's when, so that's when I met Luca. I was at, I met Luca actually the first night I moved into that apartment. So it was right after I dropped out. The day I got back, the day I got back, I went to Luca's house, but it wasn't even to meet Luca. That's just what it turned into. But basically this guy I met on Instagram, his name was John, John Mancini. He he called me. He saw like I posted a story that oh you just unplugged it, bro. Oh my god! <laughs> do you have to do the whole remote thing again and everything? Yeah, I think we oh, might, I think we might as well just leave it off. Fuck it's not it. meant to be. Yeah. Um, but he like I posted a story of the new apartment, and he was like, "Oh, you're in my." And I never met this kid before. He just hooked me up with the, the Jet Smarter membership so I could get those uh, empty leg flights. So I just knew who he was. He replied to my story. He's like, "Hey, do you want to play poker at Supreme Patty's house tonight?" And I was like, "Yes, that sounds lit." So me and my roommates and this girl I was hooking up with at the time, we like all went to Supreme Patty's house that night with this guy, John Mancini, who like, I didn't even know who he was. And how do you know who you were? How do you know who I was? Yeah. From Instagram. Gotcha. Just from Instagram. Yeah. And, uh, so we get we get to and I like I just thought it was sick going to Supreme Patty's house because he he was like super famous at this time and like I was just like yeah and I was just like excited to go meet some cool people and this was the very first night I get back in Miami dropped like as a dropout like this was like the first day so I was like things are going good really good so I get over there and we're playing poker and I remember I had to put like three hundred dollars um to get like chips or whatever and I was like and I lost all of it obviously because I don't know I don't know how to play poker like I was just there to meet people yeah. Um, but I remember thinking like, fuck, this is a, this is definitely a big L to the bank account right now, but like, you got to do what you got to do to network sometimes. And 
basically, I remember I started talking to Luca because he was like, oh, I do, you know, e-commerce too. We hit it off super, super well. And he was like, I have an idea for something we could do together. And obviously, like, he's living in this mansion in North Miami on this island with Supreme Patty and all these other influencers. I was like, I would love to do whatever your idea is with you. So, but I'm playing it cool, obviously. And I, so he's like, come over tomorrow and we'll like shoot hoops and, and talk about my idea. So I'm like, done deal. That's so funny. Luca, every person he's he shoots a, yeah, hoops That's with how he meets people. That's every his thing. Time. That's his thing. That's his thing for sure. So... I drove over, I literally, I didn't have a car at the time. I used my roommate's car, drove all the way to, it was like, it's like an hour drive. He's like all the way North Miami Beach is the house that they used to have. Drove up there, we were shooting hoops and he was telling me how he wants to make a course and he wants me to be the face of the course. And he's like, we'll work together with the content, but I want you to be the one like pushing it. And I was never like, I never like got into like the cold course selling side of like the whole e-commerce space. But I was like, honestly, I'll do, I would do whatever business idea this kid said because I knew he was really smart and really successful and I was like if he thinks this will go really well then we'll do it so that's so we kind of worked on that for the next like two months and I got like really close to him and Peter and I got to like hang out with all those influencers all the time and they were always having like famous people come around the house so I was just like around that energy and it was really fun because I just I've always seen those like a lot of the people that lived in the house on Instagram and, and I recognized so many things from the videos that I was there in person. I was like, this is awesome. Like, yeah. This is crazy. I just got back to Miami. Like things are going, it's like going really on well. a movie set. Yeah. It felt like that. It felt like that for sure. I was definitely a little star starstruck at first. Um, but basically, yeah. So we, we built an entire course and we pushed it for literally like two weeks. And then we were just like, fuck this. I don't know why. Didn't I, you guys do like a $10,000 giveaway with it? We did a giveaway. Yeah. We gave away money. That was like Luca's money because I didn't even have money. But Damn. yeah. But did you at least make what you gave away? Oh no! Oh no! Yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, yeah. And it was through Supreme Patty's profile, right? Uh, we pushed it on a bunch of different influencer pages. Luca just like had connections to all these pages. Um, and I think Supreme Patty probably posted like a story or something. But it wasn't like through through his page. He was just like one of the people promoting it. But I think what Luca like looking back. Obviously, like Luca, Luca is a smart, like a super smart kid. But I think what he didn't realize at the time, and I was just listening to whatever he said because I, I knew he was already like successful in my eyes. So I was just like gonna do whatever he said. And I think he saw Supreme Patty's audience sell like little products so well that he thought he could, his audience could sell or like he could sell anything to his audience, including a dropshipping course, which just wasn't wasn't the case. So that shocks me, especially because I feel like that would have been like pretty a really big winner. Oh, yeah, with the, with the audience. Like, per personally for me, okay, especially, like, coming from someone like Supreme Patty. Like, and, and his target is... is They're like, all really young. They're really young. I just, or they were. I just feel the like the entrepreneurial spirit has never been higher in the younger generation than it is right now. Now, but this is also three years ago. Gotcha. Okay, so this is right when dropshipping started yeah. becoming mainstream. Yeah. Gotcha. So, I don't know. Maybe it would could have worked better now, regardless. We, we pushed it for a little bit. I didn't like it. Like it just what didn't feel natural for me to be the face of this course. Like I just didn't. I just didn't. I just didn't like it. Like there's just no other way to put it. I just didn't like it. I felt like I wanted to be more of a behind the scenes guy. I just didn't enjoy it. I I wasn't having. It wasn't fulfilling. I wasn't having fun doing it. And it wasn't even selling very well. Like I feel like we just kind of did a bad job with the whole marketing strategy. So I was like, let's just shut this. How down. much was it? Uh, like a hundred or two hundred dollars, like not even a lot. Yeah, we wanted it to be like that's because we also knew we were advertising to his audience. They probably aren't going to be the ones dropping a thousand dollars on right. the course. So we were like, let's make it a little cheaper. Um, but yeah, so it was a great learning experience. But obviously, the big win there was making the connections with Luca and that whole group because you know I still work very closely with them, and they're like also really awesome people that I see eye to eye with. So I think I could always twist anything that failed into a good situation. Like I made awesome, I made awesome connections there. Like that's all that was. Um, but right around when that course launched is when I started to see real success with e-commerce. That's like when, so like, I would say the first clicking point, like, or turning point in like my whole business career so far was that the first one was that day I was playing, uh, Frisbee and I had like a thousand dollar day. That was like the first day. Then there was a whole second wave when Will and I started partnering together and our skills just complemented each other perfectly. And we, we just started actually running stuff up. So this now I was making like over five thousand dollars a day in sales, um, really good margins, maybe like two two thousand to two thousand five hundred. That was profit. Hell yeah! And I was like, this is crazy because the truth is like, up until that point, I never I never really believed that I was gonna make money because it's hard to believe it until it happens. 
And I always like try, I've talked to so many people that haven't like had that breaking point yet. And I try to explain to them that I get like your doubts right now. You just have to keep going at it because you'll hit that breaking point. And then you're going to be like, I knew I could have done it this whole time. I just like was kind of doubting myself. But in, at least in my brain, there was always a, and I believed in myself, but there was a piece of me that was like, I see all these other people making money, doing the same thing. There's no way that's going to happen to me. Like it was like that little voice in the back of your head. That's just like kind of shitting on you. And I was just like, when I finally got past that breaking point and I was like, I did this and this is real and this is possible. I was like, let's fucking go. So I did what every other entrepreneur does when they make money and me and Tyler booked a trip to Bali. Yes. I was like the first thing we did, um, which is actually a crazy story. Had itself. you been out of town, like out of the country at this point? Yeah. No, I mean, my family was big into traveling, um, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Cause yeah. you're huge in the travel. I am. I am. It's honestly like my biggest passion. It, it's definitely like my happiest time is when I'm traveling for sure. Bef like pre COVID, I would just get so like, I would just hate being locked up and locked up. Like I could do whatever I want, but I would just hate like being in the same city for so long. Even though I love Miami, I would just kind of just like feel the need to go somewhere. And thankfully I have like so many other entrepreneur friends that can be as spontaneous as I'd like to be. And we yeah. just like book random trips, like literally Barcelona. We pl we booked it like four days before we went just like trying to be as spontaneous as possible. That was the best. So fun. So fun. No plans ever. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> So the Bali yeah, trip. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, tell me about Bali. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll leave out the details of the trip itself because that was kind of what you'd expect. But getting there was cr one of the craziest stories of my life. So Tyler and I, yeah, so Tyler was starting to make some money too. He got back into drops. Like, so, okay, so something I forgot to mention is after I started doing the watch store and like Tyler and I got into that fight, he kind of stopped, like we stopped doing that clothing brand um, because like the watches were just making me way more money. I was like, all right, like I'm going to focus on this. And he was so, uh, busy with schoolwork that he couldn't run it by himself. So we just kind of put that aside and he just stopped drop shipping. And then when he saw Andrew and I making all this money, he wanted to learn it again. And I did. And I like, we had like a call and I like just taught him like everything I knew about Facebook ads and he started making new stores. Um, and, and like there was a whole, that whole summer leading up to the Bali trip, I would literally go. So this is like, this is after, so I'm trying to think which summer. This is the summer, yeah, after freshman year. So this is right after I dropped out. So before I even got to um, Red Roads, the apartment that we met at. Summer 2017 then, right? Yeah, probably, I don't know. Regardless. Wait, no, summer 2018. 2018, I think. Yeah, because I, I met you 2019 summer. Okay, okay. So yeah, so I would go to his house every day and we would just work together, like literally, or every night, like I would just like be working uh, like on my stuff during the day and he would actually have work during the day. And then at night, literally every single night, I would go over to his house and we would just work on stores. And he made like four or five stores that all failed. And then he made like another one. I don't even remember what the product was, but he finally got one to work. And then he was like, all right, like he was back. Once that happened, he was back in it. Like he knew you he guys, was back. Are you guys collaborating on stores right now? Or Me and Tyler? separate? No, you guys not. are just working together, but separate entities. Oh, at the time? You mean it right now, right now? No, no, no. At that, because you oh. said you're going to his house, right? No, so yeah, all separate stores, though. I had my own gotcha. stores and he had his. That's yeah. the best way to do it, in my mm -hmm. opinion. I feel like it gets yeah. messy when it's a it, friend partnership. Yeah, you never, I mean, for Will and I, like, we're, we're really close friends and we're partners. And it, and, it, and it hasn't, there really hasn't been any issues because That's our skills, good. like, it's, like, almost comical how much our skills complement each other. And with Tyler, we were just good friends and wanted to make money and that was like the only thing that we had to, that was like linking that uh partnership so it wasn't it wasn't like a match made from heaven in, in a business sense but uh, yeah so we were grinding super hard together um i was i finally started making money when i so this is like fa f fast forward now to when i was living in red road and actually started making money partnering with will and i was like i want to go to bali like that that's what i want to do like and tyler was down he was like making a little bit of money too so we book a trip like literally a week in advance and I'm just so excited. I'm like, I'm finally making money. Like I, you know that feeling when you first crack the code and you're just like, life is insane right now. I, I went to the college I dropped out of and then I was at the bar and I looked at my phone, thousand dollars for the day. That was my first thousand dollar day. And I'm Hell like, yeah. I never will not have money ever again. Yep. Yep. It's a mindset. It's crazy. So, and once you see it happen, like once you looked at your phone and saw that thousand dollars, you're like, it's real now. Like, right. It was like for so long, it was an, it was an idea, and now it's real. Yeah. And, and it's just like I don't the craziest. Know, I don't know about you, but I feel like the my first thousand dollar day was way more powerful than my first ten thousand dollar day. Um, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, something about making a thousand dollars a day, graduating from the hundreds. What about your first hundred k day? How was that? 
I never had 100k. <laughs> I've had 100k a week. Okay, okay. Yeah, but never a day. Yeah, no, I was just messing with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even then, I don't think anything's ever going to... Because I think the $1,000 day was the first separation between true, true. structure and uh, the dream life, essentially, was what I was going yeah. for. Like that, until I hit that, I never felt that. No, I remember I that because I, I woke I up the next day and then I did 1600 at with $900 profit and like fat fucking profits that is fat that's when i re that's when i was like buying everything like like yeah dude. so you went through the same phase yeah. that like i went through when i was a freshman yeah yep. okay, cool cool so yeah so we booked a trip and we we're just like let's just go and have fun like we're making like i was making money and i was just like life is crazy right now so book a trip and basically so there was a layover so yeah so we were like at the airport super excited we had a layover in south korea so our big flight i flew to michigan first um, and then we flew from Michigan to Atlanta, and then the plan was Atlanta to South Korea to Bali. And we already had every hotel, like, tour. Everything we wanted to do in Bali was already booked. We were just, like, super excited. So we, we, fly, we fly from Atlanta to Seoul, South Korea, and we get there, and it's, like, 4 in the morning there, and we're just, like, super tired because we barely got to sleep on the flight. Obviously, we're, like, sitting economy, and we're just, like... We're just loving it, though, because it's like a huge adventure. This is my first time ever in Asia, so I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. And we go to, like, the desk where you, like, because we had, so we had, like, a 10-hour layover there, and then it was directly from Seoul to Bali. So we go to the desk where you, like, get your next boarding pass printed or whatever. And the woman asked for my passport, and I give it to her. And she's looking at it for a while, and I could tell something's wrong, but I didn't know what was good. And she, like, calls someone else over, and they're looking at it, and they're t putting stuff into the computer. Wait, are they speak in English? Yeah, like, but barely. Okay. Like, a little bit, like, enough that they're like, oh, just, it's okay, like, wait, or stuff. But they they can't, like, fully explain to me what was going on. And eventually, like, every, like people are, are going, like, in the line, there are two lines. In the line next to me, people are going, giving the passport, getting their boarding pass, and, and going to, like, the next section, one by one by one, and I'm standing there, I'm like, something's up, I don't know what it is, but something's not normal, and I'm, like, freaking out, because I'm in South Korea in four in the morning with my, just my friend, I'm like, what is going on right now? Basically, like, the, the woman calls us some sort of supervisor over, and he explains to me that they can't, they won't print my boarding pass from South Korea to Bali, because Bali is, you know, a part of Indonesia and Indonesia has a policy where if your passport, if you're uh, an international like visitor and your passport expires within six months, you can't enter the country. It has to, for whatever reason, I don't know why that's a law, even though like I was obviously not staying for six months. That's, weird. that's just a law that they have. And I did not know about that. So they were like, there's nothing we can do. I'm sorry. And I was like, so I called my mom. We're like looking up, like trying to find loopholes. Like what if there's a U.S. embassy in South Korea I could go to and like fin get some sort of stamp that extends it or like any little finesse. And then we remembered I'm also a citizen of Brazil. I have a Brazilian passport, but I didn't bring it with me. And that didn't expire for a while. But she, my mom was saying like, maybe you could go to the Brazilian embassy and get like a temporary passport. We were looking at every option possible calling. We were calling them. I called American Airlines and I was like, how did you how did you allow me to book this flight? You know, my passport expires. And they were like, yeah, that they literally claimed it was their fault. Like they were like, yeah, like our system shouldn't allow you to do that. But for whatever reason, it went through when I booked it online. Wow. And so we're just panicking. So it was like 4 a.m. and the embassy didn't open till 10 a.m. and the flight was at like 11 a.m. So there was no way, even if I could, even though like everything we're look, looking at online says that there is nothing I could do, even if we went to the embassy and they could figure something out, I wouldn't have been able to make the flight. So Tyler's like freaking out. I'm like, holy shit, I fucked this whole trip up. Like, I can't believe How this. How long were you going there for? Uh, 10 days. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's a, that's a lot a pretty, of hotel time. A lot of yeah, planning. And already paid for. Everything was paid right, for. Right, non-refundable. Yeah, yeah. So we're like, holy shit, like we fucked up. So I'm just like literally for hours calling everyone, going back to the desk, like just trying to figure out something. And just to like lighten the mood at the time, because Tyler was getting really upset. Like I could tell Tyler was pissed because like we had this all planned. It was like kind of my fault that it was falling through. Just to like almost lighten the mood, I called my buddy Trevor. And I was like, Trevor, like you're not going to believe what happened. And without me even finishing my sentence, Trevor was like, what, does your passport expire in six months or something? I was like, what? dude, how, because he, Trevor's like one of these guys, like little background, Trevor is like a, one of these travel hacker guys. He knows everything and anything and everything about traveling. He's the one that gets me like super cheap flights and like finds private jet flights and stuff. Like he just knows all this. Anyway, so that's why I wanted to call him because I thought he would like find it funny. I, I was going to like, I thought I was going to be teaching him that you couldn't go there in six months, but he, or with a passport that expires within six months, but he obviously already knew that. So I was just telling him that, and he's like, yeah, dude, like, I thought you knew that. Or he's like, I'm surprised American let you book a ticket if they knew, because you have to put your passport in when you book online. So right. they knew that it expired within six months. 
And I was like, yeah, dude, I don't know what to say. And then I couldn't believe what he said. He goes, how, he's like, okay, so I told him, I told him it was almost ironic that I have a Brazilian passport, but I literally just didn't bring it. And if I had it, I'd be fine because that doesn't expire for like four years. And he's like, what if I brought you your Brazilian passport? And I was like, that's very kind of you. That's very nice, but I kind of would need it right now. And I'm not expecting you to come to South Korea. He's in New, like Connecticut or whatever. I'm like, I'm not expecting you to come to South Korea right now. And he's like, let me see what flights are available. And he's like, would you pay for it if I do? And I was like, dude, I'll do anything. Wow. And he looks online. He finds a flight. He books it. And two hours from then, so I call, so he books a flight literally that leaves JFK in two hours and goes straight to Seoul. How far is JFK from like Connecticut? I don't know. Like, I don't remember. He might have been in New York at the time. I don't think it was too far. Maybe okay. like, I don't remember exactly, honestly. But basically, he also didn't have my Brazilian passport. That was at my parents' house in New Jersey. So what, what, what oh, ended man. up, yeah, so what ended up happening. And my parents had never even heard of this kid. Like, it's not like he was like someone I've been friends with for a while. I called my dad. I was like, you need to drive to JFK right, you have to leave right now. I'll explain more why this makes sense on the way, but you have to just leave right now. And I, and on, while he's driving there, I'm explaining to him like the whole situation. And obviously he's super sketched out by it because he's giving us a, a kid he's never met before my passport with the idea that this kid's gonna fly to South Korea and bring it to me. All I'm picturing is your dad driving to JFK and you forgetting to tell him to grab the Brazilian oh, passport. God. Oh God, <laughs> that would be bad, that would be bad. But yeah, so he's dry, he's like, I'm like, you need a floor it too, like just start driving. <laughs> Thank God he did. Like he, like I think he, I mean, he already knew the, that there was a situation going on. So like, it, it's not like I just called him on a random day and told him to do that. He knew something was going on. Um, so within two hours of me calling Trevor, like to like tell him a joke basically about the situation, Trevor and my dad met for the first time at JFK Airport. My dad gave Trevor my Brazilian passport. Trevor literally had to haul ass to make his flight. Like he was one of the last people to board, made it onto his flight and was inbound to South Korea. So that solved one problem, but we still had to spend the night in South Korea. Well, how, how many hours until your flight, uh, at this point when you called him, how many hours until your flight took off? The, uh, the next one? Yeah. Like, probably like eight hours. But the flight to South Korea was like 15 or something. So we knew we weren't going to make so, that flight. So let you switch the flight. Yeah. So I, American like paid for the difference and let me switch it because they realized that this was all their fault for letting me book it in the first place with a passport that's invalid in the country I'm entering. Like yeah. completely their fault. So just by chance, Tyler's dad calls him and he's like, you're in Seoul right now, right? And Tyler's like, yeah. And he's like, my really good work buddy that Tyler had already met has an apartment in Seoul. He's actually flying in from LA. He'll be landing in Seoul in, in like three hours. He has two spare bedrooms in his apartment. You guys can stay there. I was like, wow, the stars are lining up again. Like I'm winning now. Like this is crazy. So we literally spent the next, like we, we entered South Korea. Like we like filled out whatever had to be filled out, entered the country, spent the next four hours just sitting around the airport. Like I was just like, we were just working on stores, literally just exploring the South Korea airport. There are all these cool like robots and stuff like walking around. Everything there makes sense. They do, a, they're very technologically advanced oh, yeah. what they do. Um, so then basically this guy lands, never met him before. I'm like, hey, like, thanks for the hospitality. He's like a very like quick moving guy, like talks very quick, just an interesting, in interesting person. We get in his cab, takes us to his apartment, we uh, like set up our stuff. He takes us out to dinner. He buys us uh, like Korean fried chicken. I got to see Seoul for a night, which is a really cool city. Next morning, we wake up at like 5 a.m., take the bus to the airport. And right there, as soon as I walk in, I see Trevor holding an envelope that's with my dad's handwriting on it that says Noah Passport. And I'm like, this is fucking crazy. This is Jeez. fucking crazy. I ended up, he ended up coming to Bali with us. I paid for his entire trip. He got a free trip to Bali and I got to go to Bali. So it kind of worked out for everybody. Damn. And how, how long is that flight from there to Bali? Oh, that's, that wasn't too bad. That was maybe like five hours. Gotcha. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I've never been to any of those countries before. Only been to Germany, but I've wanted to and I was about to. I, we will. We will. And then COVID <laughs> happened. Dude. True. Dude, like the best of everything. We, back in, at 1733, we were all planning a huge trip to Switzerland. Okay. Switzerland, your money, as far as I know, looking at Airbnbs, I, I generally base how expensive good Airbnbs are. About how is about how much you're gonna spend like there like I'm saying like if I go to New York City yeah like when we went we were paying like twenty five hundred a night for a place 
we're probably going to be spending a lot of money. But like in Switzerland for like 5,000 a month, you can get like a house yeah. overlooking that huge lake that they have yep. up there. No, that's crazy, dude. I mean, if you ever go to Southeast Asia, like the second time I went to Bali, which is like a lot more recent, we got a three bedroom villa with a pool and, and a cook and everything all included. Yeah. They would clean it every day for 3,000 for the month. Yeah, I hear, I hear Bali is where Very the money cheap. goes far. Very cheap. Is it the same in Thailand? I think it's cheaper. I've never been to Thailand, but I heard it's cheaper. Oh, okay. I thought you said... I always get Bi- Bali and Thailand mixed up. I think I think they're very similar culturally. I'm, Are they I'm, s- close together geographically? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all Southeast Asia. Aren't they continents? No, I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding about that. Back to college we go. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to college, I didn't learn anything about geography in college. I, no, not in college. I was like, what, middle school? Yeah. And I, it, like it, it was weird driving in LA because a lot of people who asked where I was from, like in the Uber, they're like, "I go St. Louis." And While you were driving Uber, well, yeah, and okay. they're like, um, "Where's that?" And so it was, it was like a good fat percentage who had no idea. I could see that. And then some people, I'd say it's it's in Missouri, and they go, where, "Where's that?" That's at? bad. That's bad. Yeah, that's very bad. That's very bad. Yeah, it, I guess I bet it was a lot of people who didn't grow up here, though. If I had to guess. Like maybe grew I up in Mexico. So. I yeah, hope I hope so. so. Fuck. They, I think they said like, I forget what percentage of Americans can't find America on a map. That's just pathetic. That's just crazy. Let's ask. Oh, I can't ask Siri because I'm doing the the backup recording. But yeah, I think um, I think somewhere along the way, I think humans kind of started diverting the attention from the important stuff, and we started to get kind of brainwashed by like other things. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Um, feel like there's a lot of noise going on right now. Yeah. Just a lot of white noise. But I think the only way to really grow is through traveling. Definitely. The best way to grow is through traveling. To grow and learn. Like, that's like real learning. That's like how you really learn. My friend tried to convince me. He's like, I've been to eight countries. It's all the same. It's, that's it's not all true. the same. And I'm like, that's not true. I'm like, I have, I've only been to one country. And I, and even I know it's not true. I got something fucking in my eye, dude. Like, do you see me over here? Yeah, is it that bug it, again? <laughs> oh, I, what if it's that bug piece that's finally secreting out of my eye? It's really bothering oh, has me. that been in there? It could be. Wish I brought an eye patch. I should, yeah, that's what we should have done for the hat thing. Oh, true, true, true. Me and Noah have done this interview. Not like this, but we did an way interview. Less, way less formal. Like yeah, that. we were just sitting on a couch. I think we didn't have the wireless microphone. I think it was the no, it was mic. The, yeah, it was the camera. It was and something. it was at sunset, and then we just kept switching hats. For some reason, we thought that was the you, funniest you thing. You thought it was so funny. I, I was like, I especially. This. You were I, dying. We couldn't even, we stopped the interview because you couldn't stop. I think you were laughing at me laughing. I was, I was laughing, laughing at the yeah, hats. Yeah, and then we kept trying to redo it. And Sabas was there holding the camera. Oh, yeah. And we just literally couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> Those are some good times. That was fun. That was a good time. When was that? Wasn't that March? Dude, I'm really bad with like remembering when things were. Like I use Snapchat memories for that. Snapchat memories? Yeah. Are you still on Snapchat a good amount? Um... Not a crazy amount. Like, I don't, like, have streaks with anyone or anything. But, like, there's, like, very specific points in time where I'm, like, this is a Snapchatable moment. Like, yeah, it's kind of, like, something that doesn't quite make Instagram stories. Or I don't want everyone on my Instagram seeing it. Because on my Snapchat, I only have, like, people I actually know, for the most part, at least. Yeah. Um. So, if there's, like, something that's, like, a little more personal, maybe, I'd post that on a Snapchat story. Like, like what, for example? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> It looks like uh, Will was right. We're getting the sunset right between the buildings. Yeah, we could put one of these blinds down if we need to. How many countries have you been to at this point? Um, I don't have an exact number off the top of my head. Probably around like the 10 to 12 to ish. Are you trying to go to every one in your life? Every single one? Yeah. Nah, not every single Are you trying one. to go to every continent? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. We're, uh, we're, Antarctica next. We're, yeah, we're, we're planning a trip to Antarctica we were planning on going March 11th, which would have set us right between COVID, I mean, regular life and, and, co- co- and post-COVID life, COVID yeah. life. And we were talking about that last night about like... Uh, Is your eye all right? My eye's going to be fine, dude. Uh, most people listen to this anyway. Okay, cool. <laughs> For those people who are just listening, Scott is horribly in pain right now. Well, it's not only that. It's just because... The Airbnb guy made me wake up at 8 a.m. after going yeah, to bed at yeah, 4 a.m. I'm, I'm kind of disillusioned right okay, now. I'm okay. not going to lie. You're all good. You're all good. But hopefully the conversation's making sense. I think so. Good. Good. I think so. I got a good <laughs> night's sleep, so. Yeah. Antarctica. Yeah. 
So yeah, no, I'm the same way. I think I'd rather be someone who can say they've been to seven countries than been, I mean, seven continents than been to every country. I mean, every country is like kind of unrealistic, I feel like. Some people have done it though. I'm sure. But you got to like dedicate pretty much your life to yeah. it and imagine. Yeah. And I can't even imagine I'd rather, how much money. I'd rather go to space. Yeah. Do you think that's coming soon? Yeah. Well, in our lifetime. I who do you think is going to do it first? Commercial like space flight. Like SpaceX or NASA, you mean? Or uh, I'm talking about like in terms of like, you want to take a flight up to space. I mean, that already exists, Virgin Galactic, but it's like 150K or 250K. Or oh, they're actively doing it right now? Yeah, but it's literally like that price tag. And you also are only, like I did a little homework on it. You're only in actual space, like zero gravity space for maybe five minutes and you're paying that much. How come, do you know why they only have to do, why they only can do it for five minutes? I don't, I don't, I don't remember. I mean, this is a while ago and it could be different. This was like maybe a year ago I looked it up. Yeah. Well, SpaceX is trying to do something similar, right? Yeah. What's their plan with that? I don't know what their plan with it. I mean, I know Elon's whole life mission right now is just Mars, Mars, Mars. Um, but I think they are also trying to do like some sort of vacation like to space. Like I remember something about like reading that you could do like a night in the International Space Station for like around 50,000 or something, which would be sick. That would. Um, Wait, how sick. much? 15,000? 50. 50,000? Yeah, but that, again, like that number could be super wrong. This is just off Does the that include of my head. flight? I travel? think I think that's everything. I think that's everything. But that number could also be super way off. Like, I I remember they were doing something a long time ago for eight million dollars. They take you around the moon. Really? Yeah. And people did that. Probably not many. I feel like I would have heard that. This uh, I heard about this when I, in two thousand eight. Okay. Okay. But apparently NASA doesn't have the technology to go back to the moon. Did you ever see that clip? What do you mean? Like the guy who was head of, uh, not the head of NASA, but head of Apollo 11, I believe was the first one. He did an interview with, I think, National Geographic, and he's like, "Me." they asked him, why can't, why haven't we back, been back to the moon since the 60s or 70s? And he goes, I'd love to go back. The problem is uh, we destroyed all that technology, and we don't have the technology to go back right now. I've not heard that. And they also, guess what they did with all the original film? All destroyed. Sus. They destroyed Sus. all the film. Sus. <laughs> you know what my theory, my conspiracy theory on Elon Musk yeah. is? Oh, God. What? This is my own personal All one. right, let's hear it. This guy, seen, like, when you watch the Joe Rogan interview, he's, like, kind of, like, um, like doing this. Kind of, like, he's, he is, um, he is, like. He does do that. He does he's do like that a computer. with his eyes, yeah. Yeah, he's, like, a computer. And he's so smart. He's built, he, he built three sim major companies simultaneously. Yeah. He had PayPal and all that. No, he's out of control. He's out of control. I bet Neuralink was his first company, okay. and he installed it in his brain Fair way enough. back, Fair and that allowed him to be go this far. And he would never say that, obviously. I, he, well, actually, if you watched the most recent video produced by Neuralink, he made a joke about that. So oh, really? He said like somewhere in the video with the pigs. I could have it installed right now, and you you wouldn't. Oh, know. that's right. Yeah, with yeah. the with the pigs. With the pigs. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember him saying that. Maybe that's where I got that from. I talked to Jared about that too. Yeah, it's a very realistic theory. Yeah, because it's like, how do you explain someone that? And have you read his biography at all? I've not. I really should though. I mean, I'm obsessed with the guy. If you like, on the first page, the author is like, "Here I am talking to Elon Musk, and he's talking about world domination while he has cookies and cream ice cream dripping from his lip." <laughs> and because that is, he had his assistant get with extra sprinkles or something like that. Oh my god. Yeah, he has he's, a, he's the best. He's the best. Yeah, I would love to have a talk with him. I I saw a recent podcast with him, and the way he talks is very fluid. And I like how he, they asked him, it was a really, I don't know if you saw this, a really rude inter, um, interviewer. And I've she, only seen his Joe Rogan podcast, I think. Yeah, he did this one recently, and it, she was weird. She's like, so who are you voting for? And he's like, well, it actually really depends on the, bait, the debates. And she's like, that's going to be your decision, the debates. That's what the, the debates are for. <laughs> exactly. It, it, was, it was crazy. And then he did a beautiful transition where he starts talking about politics and then space, but you don't know where he shifted into space. You kind of like lose thought because this interview, like I, I just couldn't picture Elon didn't mad. I just picture him outsmarting anybody who yeah. makes him upset. Yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. So what are you up to nowadays? And and I I saw you had a, a 
Ru- Rublin. Rubik? Yeah, Rubik. Yeah, that was, that was I mean, that was like a, uh, just a fail, failed venture. I mean, I didn't really put too much time into it, but basically uh, one of Will and I's stores, like we pretty much partner on all of our stores. We wanted to make a nootropic brand. Mm-hmm. Um, so we found this company in Georgia that basically handles everything that we wouldn't want to do, which is like doing all like the lab tests that you have to do because it's a consumable product, which is like a whole different ball game. Hell yeah. Anything you eat has to get like tested and approved that it's like safe. So Will is like big into just like, just like everything health related in general. So he already knew, he already had a list of ingredients that he wanted to put into a nootropic supplement. So he kind of handled that. He spoke with the uh, company in, in Georgia. They uh, te- like they put the like the ingredients in the pill, test it to make sure it's safe. They bottle it and design the labels and wow. like print it. So they handled all of that. We ordered like $20,000 worth of inventory, shipped it to our apartment. We were just gonna um, fulfill it like ourselves in the beginning. And then we we spent so much time building a click funnel and like all these websites and we got all these professional professional videos made, and then we realized like I realized for myself if I'm gonna everyone talks about building a brand building a brand, it's really like you have to real if you're building a brand and like in its truest sense not when people say like oh it like I'm I'm pumping out a brand for like Q4 like when if you're really yeah. building a brand like there's two different like people the word brand kind of lost its meaning with this whole dropshipping wave because everyone Definitely. thinks they have a brand I'm talking about like a real brand it's very black and white what it is if you're going to build something like that you have to actually truly not just pretend or not not even convince yourself you have to at the bottom of your heart wholeheartedly believe in the product period end of story like you have to love what you're selling and even the month or three months or six months when the market doesn't love it and when everyone's telling you like no i don't want to buy this or no i don't like your marketing or your ads aren't converting or your your instagram's not getting engagement that has to not even be making you think of giving up on it because you believe in it that much. That's like, the, in my eyes, the only way you could really build a brand. That's a good definition. And I started to realize that even though I actually do, do love the product and I literally to this day take it every single day, like it really does give me mental clarity and I think it's a great product. I wasn't truly, truly passionate and in love with it. Just because something's a great product doesn't mean it's, I want to make it like my life mission. And that's kind of what building a brand is. Like there's tons of products I use every day that I love. But they're not like my calling. And I realized that like I was forcing myself to like be doing this building a brand thing because that's what everyone like is saying you're supposed to do. And I was like, this is not what I want to be doing. Like if I'm going to build a brand around something, I can't just like wake up one morning and say, I'm going to build a brand. Now let me pick a product. That's that can't be how it is. It has to be. I thought of something and this will solve a problem that I deal with. And then I make it or like, you know, get someone to make it and it works. And I'm in love with it. And I and I just can't wait to share with the whole world so bad that the marketing just falls into place and everything just kind of happens. That's like how I see you could build a brand. And if you look at any like super successful brand that's built, that's usually s- s- relatively how the story goes. Yeah. So it just kind of felt forced. Um, it's like, again, it's a great product. I really do take it every day, but I didn't. I didn't see the big picture and we kind of just give them away as gifts now. So I'll get you a bottle. So basically what you're saying is you have a lifetime of, a Rubik that you can take the rest of your life. I have life. a lot. I have a lot. But it, I think it expires in a couple of years, so I got to start, like, giving it away. What's the ingredient that expires in it? Um, I don't remember. I mean, like, that would definitely be a Will question. He's the one who, like, handled. I remember there's, like, lion's mane mushroom, ginkgo biloba. Those are, like, the only two I could think of off the top of my head. But it was all just, like, natural stuff. No stimulants or anything. That's just, like, just all stuff that's good for your brain, just, like, to help give you clarity. That's dope. Yes. And what, what other ventures? It was a good, le- good learning experience. What other ventures besides that are you into now that you really feel the passion that you're talking so about? So, yeah, before? so now I'm building. So, like, I'm like, I'm still doing e commerce, but I kind of, I've always looked at e commerce as more of a stepping stone into bigger projects. Like, in my, in my mind, it's not only been the most fun experience of my life, but I've gotten to meet so many cool people, like how we were talking about seeing people on the, in these YouTube videos and then meeting them in person and becoming your friends. Like, it's a crazy experience. I think the biggest takeaway from e com are the connections like those I'll have with me for the rest of my life. Um, and, and obviously like having some capital to put into a new venture, which is like what I'm really doing now. So right now, capital and confidence, capital and confidence. That, yeah, that's good. That's for good. Sure. So I, so, okay. So it's very similar to the, what I kind of explained is I like how I was explaining if I was going to build a brand, it would have to be something that like I come up with because I feel like it's solving my own problem. And then like when I realize how cool it is and how powerful it is, like 
I'm excited to share with people. That kind of happened, but in a way that I didn't even see coming and it's with a software product. So in my head, I was always thinking about building a brand with a physical product because that's what everyone talks about. And then I realized something that could be do could be done better in the software space. And I was like, wait, I could totally build a brand around a software. Like this is something that I'm building myself and that I'm passionate about. So basically what I realized is, so affiliate marketing for e-commerce, great way to get free sales basically to your store because affiliates are people who are micro influencers for you and are going out and they're, you know, posting a discount code or a link and they're getting traffic to you and you're getting sales from that. So that's just like a real, and so basically throughout my whole e-commerce journey, I was telling you like I would DM, uh, DM people in my first store to become ambassadors and affiliates. Ambassadors yeah. and affiliates have always been a great revenue source for my four years in e-commerce. Like that is that has always been super a super big revenue source for all of my stores, like ambassadors and affiliates. One, because it's a psychological thing. People love to be affiliates and ambassadors because they like to put it in their bio. They feel like they're part of a community. Um, they can help them grow followers if we're re if like the uh, accounts reposting what they post. There's just a whole like there's just a whole like thought process behind it that people have that they're just very appealed to for whatever reason. So I realized that all the affiliate marketing apps on for Shopify that existed right now, they basically were there to to like fill a gap if you have people that want to be affiliates and you don't have a way to track their sales and to pay them out. People built these softwares like Refersion, Referral Candy, um, Second Map. There's like a bunch of them out there. They're all very, very similar. They basically just kind of bridge that gap. So you have people that want to promote your product. They're, you know, they're big fans of it. They've ordered their repeat customers, whatever. And then you have, you have, and so yeah, so it would just like allow you to like track and, and pay out these people. And then what I realized is that there's no reason to not make everyone possible that you could possibly ever see in your entire life an affiliate for your store because it's free for them to be an affiliate. And the worst thing they could do is not get you sales, but they're going to be at minimum putting out content out there about your brand, which is if anything, at least building brand, brand awareness, even if they never get one sale, it's free for them to become an, a, an ambassador, an affiliate. They want to be an affiliate because it's like cool. It's like a fun position for them and they get to, you know, ever literally you pull up any girl, like sorority girl they have like in their bio, like this ambassador, this affiliate, like everyone is like promoting something and it's cool. It's great. It's a great way for brands to get the word out there. So, but what I realized is that like, why not, try like make an affiliate marketing software that tries to get everyone to become an affiliate like why not automate the acquisition of affiliates that's what, what it really came down to yeah like w there's no when you really think about it because i have a marketing brain like i'm a, i'm the facebook ads guy for my stores like for me it's about maximizing revenue and when i see these affiliate marketing apps they're not maximizing anything basically the way they acquire affiliates is by having a little uh, sign up form embedded into a page on the Shopify store. And then traffic will somehow, you know, maybe in the menu bar, they'll click affiliate program, they'll click that and they'll sign up, become an ambassador or whatever. And then the merchant has to like manually approve them. The link is then, or discount code is then created. And then they're an active affiliate and they don't even know how to properly share their discount code or they don't like, they don't know how, what they're doing. They're just like, they signed up, they had to dig through the website, they found a form. So let's say you get 10,000 visitors on your store in a day. Maybe like eight of them are be, like, nobody's going on your store and like becoming an affiliate unless they like go with that intent. And unless you're driving traffic to the affiliate sign up form, it's just not, you're not effectively converting your traffic into affiliates. And if you're not converting your traffic into sales, then you know you might as well convert the people that didn't buy into an affiliate because I bet they were on there because they like your brand and I bet a lot of them just didn't have the money or maybe they, it just wasn't the right time for them. They still want to be a part of your brand and your community. And then, then the ones that do buy, they should all be affiliates. Like oh, that yeah. should be not even a question. If someone's buying from your store, I guarantee you they want to make money. Everyone wants to make money. Everyone's trying to make money online. What better way to be than, you know, for, especially for, for someone who's not like super driven than to just literally have a discount code that they could share to their friends and family or maybe make a blog and post about and just get traffic to a store and then get literally just payouts instantly, all, all profit from the sales. No brainer. Absolutely no brainer. So that's kind of like the basis of, our app, of my app. It's called Social Snowball and it's an affiliate marketing app for Shopify. It's probably by the time this podcast is out, it'll probably be launched, but we're about to start beta testing right now. Um, and basically what we do is we have a bunch of features that will automatically convert your traffic and your purchases into affiliates. So 
for the purchases, if someone buys something from the store, our app will automatically create an affiliate account for them, like a discount code with the customer's name in it. And it'll give it to them right there on the thank you page right after they buy it. And it'll let them share it all across social media. They could copy and paste it, email it, whatever they want to do. And it just basically gives them the offer, like right under, if you look at a Shopify thank you page, it's like the first thing it says, like, thank you, Scott. Like that's the first thing right. right under that is a huge offer. That's like, you can make money promoting our products. All you have to do is share a discount code. We already created for you with your name in it right here. And then if they click like to share to Facebook, it'll open Facebook and pre-write a post. That's just like, basically like use my discount code. And then on top of that, we send them a ton of content, like literally blog articles that I wrote myself that teach them how to be effective affiliates, how to start with friends and family, how to build a blog, how to build a following on social media. We basically built, like I, be, I built an affiliate marketing app that maximizes everything. Like everyone becomes an affiliate and everyone learns how to be a good affiliate and everyone makes money. We also simplified the payout process, like all these other apps. It's like super compl super complicated and like you have to like pay out, pay manually out of the app a lot, which we offer that too. But we're offering like PayPal payouts within the app. Just try, we're just trying to simplify everything and maximize revenue. So it's like a very different approach to how all these other apps are doing it. The other apps are kind of just noticing that there's people who want to be affiliates and then they can't basically like, and then there's the merchants who want to have affiliates, but they don't know how to track and pay them out. This is like affiliate marketing from a marketer's perspective. That's like, let's turn every single customer you get into an affiliate. Let's say one out of five of your, your sales, like of your new customers turn into an affiliate and get you one sale, your return on ad spend is significantly higher now. Big like, time. That could be the difference between breaking even and profiting or not profiting and profiting very easily. Like that's not even a stretch. And then we also have features like a uh, pop-up and a traditional sign-up form for that we that you could set up to uh, try to get people who aren't buying to become affiliates because like we were talking about, there's people who are just interested in your brand but can't buy for whatever reason. They still want to promote and help and any way they can. And again, the worst thing that could happen is they share their discount code, they post content about you and get no sales. That still helps your brand. There's there's no million. losing. There's no the win -win there's situation. no reason that you shouldn't want every person in the world to be your ambassador. There's just no reason not to. So yeah, that's that's basically and you could see just from how I'm talking about it, how passionate I am about the idea of it. Like this is something I'm excited to build a brand around. Like this is something that's going to be solving a problem. That's a problem that I've dealt with because I've been doing e-commerce and dealing with ambassadors and affiliates for four years. I'm, I feel like I'm in a very qualified position to create a solution to this problem. So have you been able to test it yet? Yep. Yep. Well, yeah. So, I mean, we, we, we were, we're starting the beta program, so we haven't like ran a ton of traffic through it, but as far as functionality, yeah. it's all there. Cool. Okay. That's going to be really exciting. What goes in to like creating that app? Yeah. So basically I don't, I'm not like a developer or anything. Obviously right. I don't know how to write code, but another blessing from e-commerce, not only did it bring me connections to a company that I worked with to do that, but it also brought me the capital to completely bootstrap this project. Like I'm, it's, I'm not taking any investments or anything like this is completely out of pocket. Um, and so, yeah, so basically one of the people that helped me work on that course that I did with Luca Peter, uh, he owns four. Yeah, yeah, shout, shout out Peter. He owns four hundred four studios. His company is working on the UX and the UI and like the actual functional app. They do. They've been doing a great job. Um, and yeah, so they. So I kind of just. So what what I had to do like because obviously they're developing it, but you know how working with developers can be like you have to tell them every detail. So I had to write out like, I have like 30, 40 page Google Docs that just have every single story. And detail and by story i mean like you click on this and then this happens and then right. this drop down like every single thing that could possibly happen from every user because there's not just merchants it's not just people it's because it's, it's a shopify app essentially like you you connect it to your shopify store like any shopify app but there's also affiliates so we had to build two separate portals two separate dashboards two separate login screens all of that so i had to write out like every detail of every story for an affiliate user and every detail for every story for a merchant user send that to the developers it's been 9 months now of back and forth but we are very very close thankfully but yeah that's something i'm super excited about have you run into any issues um i mean there's yes definitely so one of the things that we haven't totally figured out yet but we're about to do is just make Pay, so payouts are like another big, so I've talked to a ton of people who have affiliate programs on their store right now, but just like aren't happy with the app they're using. And another, besides the whole uh, uh, onboarding everyone thing that we're solving, a lot of people say that the whole payout thing is like not very effective because 
So even though some apps do have automatic payouts, it's only for PayPal. And what we realized is not everyone has a PayPal. Everyone has a bank account. Pretty much everyone that's shopping online, at least because we're only talking about people that are shopping online. Right. They have a bank account at least. So one thing we're working on that we're very, very... Well, actually, we already know how we're going to do it. It's just going to cost a lot of money. So we're going to do it in our next update. But another thing that we're going to do that we... I guess you could say this is a problem we ran into because we just didn't have the money to do it now. We're going to do automatic bank-to-bank payouts from merchants to affiliates that happen automatically. So like, let's say you have a store, you get a, a sale from an affiliate... They obviously need their commission. Let's say they have their bank account. They like selected the bank account payout method. It could send the money automatically from your bank account to theirs through the app, which is something that we're working on now. Wow. Yeah, I've always admired that because it's like anyone who develops an app, so complicated. Very, so many things I never thought of. Like it's been a crazy learning experience too. Um, and th- actually, this podcast is honestly the first time I've ever talked about this publicly. Like I've never posted about this on my Instagram or anything because I just wanted kind of like what we were talking about with Jared is like, you know, just do, don't tell, just like do. Right. And like, this is something that I'm so, like I believe in so much, I'm so passionate about that. Like, I just felt like there was no need to even tell people about it until it was ready to, to be shared. And, you know, like like I said, it's been nine months in the making and we're only, you know, we're only about to start beta testing now. So if I started posting about it nine months ago, it's just not going to do anything. It's just, there'd just be no reason for it. But And it makes that moment so much better when yeah. you finally do post about yeah. it. It's like, whoa. Yeah. And like the only reason I'm even going to post about it is because my audience would love it. Like mm-hmm. the people who follow me on Instagram are mostly e-commerce people. They're they're gonna love this app. Like it's also way cheaper than any of the other affiliate marketing apps. Like on top of everything else, it's it's perfect for people who are just starting out with drop shipping. How much is it? It starts at ten bucks a month. Whoa! A what? Month. Yeah. That's we crazy. also we also take a percentage of the revenue we generate for you. Ah, okay. Um, and then basically we have it tiered so that if you're paying a higher flat fee, it will take less of a percentage. So the bigger volume you're doing on your store, it makes sense to pay a higher flat fee and then a smaller percentage. So it's kind of a plan that fits friendly to no matter how much volume you're doing. Okay, so you got different levels. Exactly, it's tiered. Yeah. So, but if you're just starting out, so so the basically the ten dollars, and this is all subject to change, by the way, like after the beta program. So by the time this podcast is released, it might be different, but. With the ten dollars a month plan, we're taking fifteen percent of the revenue we generate for you, which is a pretty big amount. But it's also ten dollars a month to be using like this affiliate platform, and then the thirty dollars a month would be ten percent of revenue that we generate for you, and then sixty dollars a month plus five percent are the three tiers. Again, subject to change after the beta program, but that's what we're working with because we also realized that Refersion, let's say, that's like a big name in the affiliate marketing apps for Shopify. They start at I believe ninety dollars a month. That is very not beginner dropshipper friendly. And I remember how I was when I was first starting out. You remember, we were just talking about the story where I wouldn't spend $300 on a Twitter ad. You think I'm about to spend $90 on an app that I don't even fully understand? Right. I want like, I just wanted to make this easy for people starting out, but also super effective for bigger brands that already use affiliate marketing and just wants a better solution. So it kind of like could work with anyone. Yeah. I remember being scared about the $30 a month with exactly. Shopify you when gonna, it first started. You think you're going to turn thir- like do a, spend 120 a month now because you're yeah, well, hell just, no. Like, not realistic. Especially yeah, like you said, that's smart. Not for beginners at all. That app $90 right. a month. Right. Also, how are you even going to get affiliates as a beginner like if you're using one of these other apps like yeah. it doesn't automate the acquisition process. I think you found you found a great hole in the market, and you're about to fill it. You're about to fill it with diamonds. Diamonds, baby. <laughs> Liquid diamonds Let's like go. Neptune. Let's go. Apparently, it rains diamonds on Neptune. Let's go to Neptune. Dude, can you imagine? That'd be sick. <laughs> when do you think intergalactic travel is going to happen? Like, like commercial, commercial, like go to Mars. Um, in our lifetime. So, do you mean like like family vacation? Or like, what do you mean? Or just like, if you like expedition, kind of like us going to Antarctica. Antarctica. That's yeah, what I was it's like, <laughs> oh, oh shit, they went to Mars. Damn. Where it won't be. Too- I I think it. W- I think it will be our lifetime. I think so too. Unless I- Elon gets assassinated, that'd be the only. Do you think he might? Do you think people are out there to kill him? I hope not. He's the best thing that's ever happened to this planet. Because <laughs> he sent stuff to space, right? What do you mean? Like he, like when he sends. These rockets, yeah. they just go around and then come back, right? Well, yeah, the new ones, like, land themselves, which is, like, right. a huge breakthrough. But never to, like, he's never been close to the moon yet. Honestly, yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't even speak on it. I don't, I don't know. I haven't heard anything, but I just know they haven't been to the, the – Na- NASA, at least, hasn't been to the moon since the 70s. Wait, we talk, yeah, we talked about this already. We're, we're, we're bringing it all the way back. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should talk about geography again. Yeah, let's go, let's go back. Geography uh, – 
But yeah, that sounds really, really interesting. Yeah. Are you now? I'll definitely get you on the beta program. Who do you definitely? I want to yeah, try that out. Sure. Who is guiding you through all this? Um. So I definitely never had like a mentor, but there's been a lot of. I've just been doing like a lot of research on similar companies, like similar softwares. Actually, my morning routine right now for the past couple of months has been: I wake up and the first thing I do is I listen to an episode of either How I Built This or the SaaS podcast, like Software as a Service podcast. And that basically just like, and if I'm listening to How I Built This, it's usually about a SaaS, like a Software as a Service. I just want to hear, I want to, I want to learn what everyone else did that has built a similar company so I could learn from their mistakes. So I've kind of just been using that as a rough roadmap to follow. On top of that, just doing my own research on all these other companies. And then my dad also, he works in software. He works for Adobe. So he has like a decent understanding of like how this kind of stuff works so i've just been talking to him about like just like because he like he understands the software building process even though that's not like directly what he does he works with uh data management but it's like he he just like understands that stuff so i always go to him for advice as well that's interesting i didn't know your dad worked for adobe yeah did jared tell you about when he went golfing at pebble beach maybe he was he was golfing with someone and he asked what he did and he said oh, i work for adobe and then uh he didn't think anything of it and they looked him up afterwards he's the number two I think he made like <sighs> 60 million last year. Or no, something I, don't like think, that. I don't think Jared told me that. Yeah, so your dad probably knows who that guy is. Definitely, yeah. Definitely. How funny would it have been, though, if it was your dad? That would have been pretty crazy. My dad does not golf, though, so <laughs> that would rule that out right away. <laughs> one of my biggest fears is doing one of these podcasts. Just losing it all. Just losing it all. Because so, you, could, you could never recreate these conversations. Like, never. If we were to do this podcast again tomorrow, it would probably still be great, but it would just be all talking about different stuff. Yeah, because the conversation just flows. I guarantee you wouldn't, we wouldn't talk about if or if not, Australia was a prison camp at one time. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Or we would try to, and it'd sound like we're in forced. like a fifth grade forced. play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Line. Dude, I just, I just had another slip. I just had another thought slip, and it was an important one. Ooh. That's what I'm saying. That's why I was like, dude, my, my, I, I'm so pissed at this Airbnb guy. Yeah. I'm going to lay he into did, him on the review. He did, he did, he did. I've only written one bad review in my life on Airbnb. Really? It's about to be number two. Yeah. But yeah, can you believe we're already an hour and a half in? Is this an hour and a half? Hour and a half so far. Damn. Like, look, you can check right here. That is crazy. Hour and a half. I thought we were maybe around 50 minutes. I, I honestly wasn't even thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of weird how you can, like, slip through time like that. It is. And time is, like, um, what would you define time as? Because it's so hard to define time. And it's so hard to put a meaning on something that is technically meaning. Well, I guess the meaning of it would it's just be. So, it's just so intangible that it's just like confuses me whenever I really start to think about it. Like obviously up front, like it, it seems very straightforward, but you know, there's many theories and a lot of proof that it's not. And whenever you're, and I'm always skeptical of it, but then I'll start to read about it. And I'll be like, oh, this actually makes sense. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to stop reading about this now. Did you know we only see one side of the moon? The only reason I'm going to say yes to that, even though I haven't heard that fact, is there's there's a pattern that I always recognize every time. Yeah. And I always I always I always see that when I when it's like a clear night. So I'm going to answer yes to that question. Yeah. I didn't know that either. I'll tell you what, this isn't even a conspiracy theory. But I took one look through my telescope at the moon and I was like, that's fuckers fake. It looks like a code. It looks like something you find in a video game, like when you're playing Grand Theft Auto and you zoom in on the moon with a sniper. Were you on DMT? I wasn't on anything. <laughs> it was like, I just got this telescope and I'm looking, I'm like, oh, that looks fucking fake. Like, I couldn't believe it. Get a you, should, you should get a telescope here. This would be a great spot to have a telescope. And not just for looking in the skies. Yeah, <laughs> apartment spying for sure. <laughs> you would see some wild shit. Like Miami is the most open city. If anyone listening to this hasn't been here, all I'm looking at is like- You could really spy on anyone. This guy's jacking off. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what that guy's doing to that dog. <laughs> But we're sitting, there's just a bunch it's of a weird lot going shit. on. It's a lot going on. Like Miami in itself, with the personalities that live here, and you're looking right into it, and, and this, they're looking like, right into you. This apartment specifically is really just like a looking glass into other people's world. Yeah, looking into glass. <laughs> I don't know where that was going. I was about to say like looking into. If you are looking into the looking glass. I don't know where I was going with that. Sleep, yeah, I, I need sleep. I'm kind of worried about this drive a little bit. I might need to, this might be a double bang you can, day. You can pop a nap here if you need. Well, it's like I, I got to go back and then I got to come back. True, true, yeah. yeah. 
And I wonder, I think Sebas probably responded to me at this point. We're meeting up with Sebas Badoya tonight. He said he'd be super down, but I have some other thing at nine till when are you here? This fucker. He's, he's already full and stuff. He's already, he's already trying to duck. We'll get, we'll get him to come. Yeah, we'll get him to come. I'm just going to tell him that this is my last night here. Yeah, you should. You should. I'm going to tell him that right now. I'm gonna, I tell and him. hopefully he watches this because I'm sure he's going to watch this one. <laughs> and, and he's going to have no idea about this. <laughs> Yeah, Sebas, actually, this is my last night, so, like, we got to do it tonight, dude. We got to, like, well, I'm not going to be in Miami um, tomorrow, maybe ever again. Some crazy shit happened. Uh, I, I can't say the details over the phone. You, yeah, I'll tell you tonight, okay? But <laughs> I, I'm sure he's, well, technically, I'm, I'm probably not coming to Miami tomorrow. And also for the people that are only listening, he just sent a voice message. Yeah, yeah, that was a voice message. <laughs> that was, I didn't just call him and he called me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that could be a little confusing. Yeah, because I'm supposed to uh, interview the e-commerce accountant tomorrow. Oh, yeah, Chris, Chris. And I'm Chris. probably just going to stay up north. That's honestly. another great example of someone that you'd refer to by their handle, their Instagram handle. Oh, yeah, but that's a good one. I think that's a really good one. For his job, I guess. Yeah, because there's... Until he decides he wants to do something bigger with his life. Yeah, I mean, he makes real good money. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's I mean, really... Chris is such a cool guy. Yeah. He sent me a video when I released one of my songs. He sent me a video of him uh, rapping. No and, way. Yeah, I got, I'll show you it after this. He's yeah. like, I was about to say something about him, but I feel like that. I feel like it might be a little exposing. I, I feel like I, I'm never mind. Can't expose him. Like yeah, he's that. a good guy. He's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he is for sure. Like, uh, it's funny. He's like, all right, Scott, I had to throw it back for this one. And then it's literally just he, he broke out the microphone and everything. And he had all the lyrics written down and he spit it over like a Drake instrumental. Really? Yeah. I couldn't even picture that. I had no clue. But apparently he's really into it. OK. And oh, dude, the, you got to see this video. I just remember it because like the type of stuff he talks about in this rap is this so unexpected you yeah. won't believe it oh dude i've like i've called him or like he's called so we've been on facetime when we're both like really fucked up yeah and dude he's like a crazy motherfucker like i never <laughs> even realized it but but still so focused yeah 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 he's a cool ass dude have you ever been to top golf by the way yeah really yeah you know jared's only been there one time he's just such a golfing on the course guy like yeah. top golf is for more, more like people like me that don't actually know how to golf and just want to like eat wings and drink a beer and like hit some balls if i was top golf i would start top golf leagues i think that's something yeah like have turn it turn top golf into itself into a new sport like i could see that okay. happening that actually is a great idea we're like yeah, yeah. they're like it's kind of like a bowling league where they close off one floor maybe the first floor okay and like you're competing against everyone and it's like because it, with top golf you're like you're not just trying to hit as far as you can you're like aiming for stuff so like, right it could be there could be total like there could be total like a bunch of different ways to measure like because there's different games at top golf right like there's yeah, different like yeah so you could do tournaments for like different games and stuff you know the ceo how old do you think the ceo is i really don't know but since you're asking i'm gonna say like 35 yeah i think like 34 cool and he has like 49 locations yeah that's all. If he owns that, there's like man, two in Miami. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that. I noticed that. There's only one in like the fucking Midwest. All right, now would be a perfect time to put the lights on. There we go. Yeah, dude. We not only do we have like this, and you can't obviously see on camera. But we have like this kind, these kinds of lights all around. But we have like from when we did that uh, DJing on the balcony thing. Oh yeah. Like the second night we did that, we wanted to go super hard, so we bought or we didn't buy. We borrowed from Will's frat a bunch of. Uh, of these just like crazy like party lights that they would use at frat parties and we were just like we taped them to the uh the ledge of the balcony and we're just blasting it wasn't it was in my old apartment but you know similar to this and we were just like blasting lights in every direction Jeez. yeah no Noah, the way he spent his quarantine was djing him and will to the whole city of miami that was crazy and it blew up it, blew it up went crazy viral crazy viral crazy viral and then uh, he couldn't even be seen in his, his uh, apartment anymore. He didn't want to be noticed in the elevator. So they literally t attached uh, a, a ladder onto the balcony and threw it all the way down onto the street. Yeah, 24 floors. 24 floors <laughs> up and down on this ladder. Yeah, I, especially when I was drunk coming home, like my life was flashing before my eyes. Like, <laughs> the, like the wind would shake it all around. There's a rope ladder too, you have Wait, to remember. Like, he, yeah, he, he went up during Hurricane Irma. On the on the the ladder, and then he went viral for that. And yeah, then he had to get rid of the ladder. And then I fell off once, like eighteen floors, but I was chilling. Yeah, he just had a couple scratches. He's a 
Because a lot of people tell me you have nine lives. Yes. Kind of like a cat. Yeah. yeah, no, that's the thing about me. When did you lose like the first couple? Oh, I only lost one, and it was. That oh, was that? It was that? Yeah, night so I'm like kind of, kind of taking it slow now. Yeah. Okay. Why do you think? Why do you think that is? Just born um, with it. I think. I think on my mother's side, like a couple generations back, there's a cat that somehow got involved genetically. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. I don't know. I don't really know the specifics behind it, but I'm like nine lives part cat now. Yeah. I think that. Whoever that was should be talking to that guy with the dog over there in the in the peanut butter jar. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> could see way too much from these views. I heard someone told me that recently, like one of their friends. By the way, none of that was true. Isn't yeah, yeah. By the way, yeah, we should probably make that true, dude. When I went to LA, that was the unspoken game for five days straight. And what? Just lying? Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, Will and I lie all the time, but like in a way that how we just did, we try yeah. to make it as ridiculous as possible until people catch on. Yes. But sometimes people don't, and then you kind of have to remind them. Oh man, there was no, there was no ladder hanging from the top. Yeah, no, no. But no. I did, I did DJ off. The, we did DJ. That off was the true. That and that did go, true. That did go very viral, and that was mad fun. That part was true. <laughs> but yeah, everyone who was doing that in LA, and it was like some, some would go on for like two days. Like a lie would go on for two days. Some go on. We for have like some months. We have some running for months now. Yeah, we, Will and I with our friends, like. So Gunner's gonna listen to this, so I guess I'm gonna break it to Gunner right now. I'm I'm not in any improv class, bro. Oh there's no improv class. Come on. <laughs> in LA we had these girls convinced that Elon was about to show up. No. And they're like, oh, we gotta change our outfits. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. That's a good that, one. That, yeah. that, that was a good Will one. Will and I do this like almost as a sport. Like when we meet new people, we don't even have to like say anything to each other. We just go into a lie immediately. And it's always the most ridiculous thing. Like I remember we convinced this girl once that you could use water skis on snow but you can't use snow skis on the water or something like that and we were getting like into the into the physics behind like the, how they're built and why oh, yeah. like the one can work on snow and water but the other can't work back and she was like so intrigued and then we were like no no, no this is true yeah it kind of it kind of if you do it to someone you just meet it almost like offends them sometimes but then i'm like all right but not if everybody's in on it so like when people would come to our house who haven't been there we did that and then we did it to these one girls i think it was the elon musk one and then Armin was just like, okay, hold up. Just to be clear, these guys, they do this thing where they just convince other people that they're telling the truth when they're not. I have never seen anything like this in my entire life. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, no, Will and I like are super into it. That's and so we, weird. We do it to, like I've, I've done it to my dad before, like with Will. Like yeah. we'll be out to dinner, just like go off on a lie, like instinct. We don't even have to think about it. It's fun, yeah. To to it's like it's like telling a a, a fictional story, freestyling a fictional yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. And then you just you just build it as crazy as possible. Like yeah. we convinced we had these three people working for us in house last year. And I convinced them that I owned a yacht and they, they'd known me for years. And I was like, no, you've seen it on my story. Like, what are you talking about? After like Will and I said enough stuff, they literally like, or at least one of them, like sincerely believed that. Yeah. I was like, yeah, we're going out next weekend. Like I'll take you out. Like a huge yacht, like 85 feet or something. And he was convinced. <laughs> and I was like, come on, dude, come on. You know, I do this. Like they knew I do this stuff too. Like I do it to them all the time. They, yeah. they thought it was funny, but somehow I got him. How many diamonds do you think you see a day? zero what everywhere i go people are rocking diamonds yeah, in I'm miami just, i'm just sitting in my room all day or like going to the gym or going to mr number oh one what's that one big movie it was the most expensive movie ever made no idea uh by james cameron dude you're asking the wrong guy this kind of question i don't even i can't even remember movies i watched they have a ride at disney world they they built a whole part of animal kingdom for this one specific dude, this it starts with such an avatar I Avatar, okay, yeah. Avatar. It looks like you're uh, you're about to oh, get born the, with the green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks like you're about to transcend or whatever they I'm call down. it in the movie. I'm down. You ever swim in the ocean? Of course. Often. Well, I actually have this very weird skin condition. I don't even know if I've ever told you about this. Mm -mm. So this basically started happening like maybe six, seven years ago. But I was I would swim in the ocean, or just like a pool, and I'd come out and I just my chest would be very red. Like noticeably, they're like not a normal amount of red. And then it happened one time and it was red and bumpy. And I was like, what is going on? And I noticed it. So like I, I, started, I talked to my mom about it. Like we started looking into it. And I noticed it would only happen when I was in cold water. Like if I went into like, if I took a shower or something, it would never happen. But if I went into any sort of cold water, whether it was the ocean, like in New Jersey, it's super cold or even here sometimes. 
um, I would just like get hives and it started to get worse. And like, it started to be more than just my chest, my arms, my legs, like my back, even my neck would be covered in hives. So I went to big hives energy, big hives energy, went to a dermatologist and an allergist and they figured out I have something called cold induced urticaria, <laughs> which is basically, which basically means, and like people think I'm making this, people always think I'm making this up. I am literally allergic to cold temperatures, like my skin on contact will have a, an allergic reaction, like literally How are you will, will release histamines when in contact with the cold. So the reason it never happens when I'm just like in cold weather is because I'm wearing jackets and it's only a contact thing. So gotcha. if I were to get an ice cube right now and put it like on my arm and let it melt for a couple of minutes, it would break out in hives there. But if it, if it were freezing in here and I put on a jacket, like nothing's going to happen. Damn, you should make like a custom ice tray and then just give yourself a hives tattoo. The Shopify hives tattoo. Not a bad idea. That would go viral right there. Probably. Now you do a lot of TikTok. Uh, a little bit, a little bit. And it's like a very, it's a, like it's a lot of my videos have done super well, but it's, it's really just like a side thing. Like I'm not like actively searching for content ideas, but if I get a content idea, I just, I'm like, we need to film this right now and like post it. And like, you know, a lot, I have had a lot of viral videos. Is yeah. it anything to do with e-commerce? I don't think I've ever posted anything e-commerce related. Good. To me, TikTok is just a Good. fun platform. I just yeah, post yeah. funny stuff. Like, well, my, my biggest viral video was DJing off the balcony. That has over 8 million views right now. So Hell that yeah. shit went crazy viral. But I've also posted a video um, with my girlfriend in, at the time in, in her car. We were just like, I was like making fun of the way she drove. And that got like 3 million views. And then I have one. They're all super random. Um yeah, I mean, those were the definitely the two biggest. I actually posted one from Breckenridge snowboarding that was just like a little uh, den that we found that was under the ground. Oh yeah, I just that got like half a million views. I just really post like I kind of just like go about my life and like if I think of a cool idea, I'm like this could be a TikTok and I'll just make it. Not all of them do well, but and then like when I hatched the quail eggs, yeah, which is something I did Hell by yeah. the way for whatever reason. Uh, I posted that and that, you know, that did pretty good. But yeah, I mean, TikTok is fun. I don't follow, the, like literally recently, Instagram's been pushing the tick, the classic like TikTok influencers like Bryce Hall and mm -hmm. especially Charlie D'Amalio. Wait, and what's been pushing it? Instagram, like on the Explore page. Oh yeah, yeah, they're everywhere. It's like yeah. it's a 75%. And who's the who's the other one who's already There's a lot of hanging them. with the Kardashian? Oh, Addison Ray. Addison Ray. okay. So I've been muting them. Like every every single one. I, I'm so tired of seeing these dances mute, mute, yeah, mute, yeah. mute. Especially on Instagram. And uh so I don't follow any of this, but I was on Snapchat outside before I came in. Did you hear about what happened to Bryce Hall? Okay, so the Today. Uh, no. He got in another fight. Like a fist fight? Yeah, with the waiter at a at um a restaurant next to LAX. Get what this fucker did. The waiter goes up and says, hey, you can't I thought here. Bryce was like one of the nicer ones. Like from what I've heard, at least, like who knows? Money and power at a young age will corrupt you. Yeah, especially when it comes really quick. Because th this is literally the, the story, at least what the restaurant is saying. The waiter says, hey, you can't uh, vape here. And then he wouldn't stop. And then the waiter said, hey, you cannot vape here. And then he took a huge rip and blew it right in his face. That's just super disrespectful. Yeah, super. If that's assuming that is what happened, I want to uh, be a little fair right, and say right. that and then like, Yeah, they said that Bryce was the one who started like going after him because he was telling him we can't vape. And then Bryce's story, which doesn't make sense, is saying that he asked for his credit card ten times and they said, We're not giving it to you. Get the fuck out of here. See, that's the thing, like I have no idea what really happened there. Yeah, I mean I guess I'm a little biased and Yeah, I don't I don't I don't like to like judge on something that I oh, couldn't be confident I on. love doing that. Yeah. I love judging people, especially on rumors. <laughs> <laughs> Accusations are, are as good as facts to me. <laughs> At least you're honest Just about kidding. it. <laughs> By the way, Sebas responded. He said, What time would it be? Oh, there we go. Or maybe we should do tomorrow. True. I mean my stomach is like Getting ready for that poppy steak, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, I yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to drive all the way back, drive here, and then drive home again. And yeah, true, true, Sleep true. delusion. I mean, yeah, we could figure that out. Whatever. We should make up a lie to tell Sebas though, just to mess with it. Then we have him come, and we're just not here or something. He'd be so pissed. That would just be cruel. Um, he could just like, what if I just told him to come through like right now, just to hang out, and then I just head back at like eight, and then we meet up whatever, tomorrow for whatever. Komodo. Yeah, whatever. Cool. I think that's the plan. Like, right. This is so crazy. This is like probably one of the most natural conversations, especially like right now. Like I, I forget feel like we're doing feel, a podcast I feel like for we're a second. Boring people with our plans, though. No, 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 no. This is the this is the things people want to hear. Okay. Well, yeah, this is what it is. Especially if we're gonna prank Sebas, like 
hit him with a water balloon or something from the fucking Should we balcony. do that? Like, right when, that'd be a good TikTok. I'm talking, pull it all the way back in right when he opens the door. <laughs> that would be a good that. TikTok. <laughs> See, this is what I'm saying. Like, someone will just say something like that and I'll be like, oh, that'd be a good TikTok. And then, like, I'll, like, actually make it happen and I'll, like, do, I'll try hard on it and post it. And, like, sometimes it'll do good. Mm -hmm. But I'm definitely not, like, a TikToker. <laughs> Man, we, me and my friend did this one thing called the Ooh Yeah Yeah freshman year of high school. I mean, college. If TikTok was available, I promise you that would have been so viral because it. I'll show you it after because it's one of those things where you have to see it to really understand okay, fair it. Enough. It was the most bizarre, most weird, but like captivating thing okay. that we've ever done, and we couldn't stop doing it. And then it all climax at uh, one day on the lake, and then like I think we fucked up his dad's head so much with it that he had to go like sit in the woods for like three hours by himself. All right. I can't wait to hear what this is. Oh yeah. It, it's pretty interesting, interesting for sure. <laughs> where do you see yourself moving? Cause your lease ends yeah. like 10 months from now, right? Yeah. Where do you see yourself moving? Are you going to stay in Miami? Are you gonna no, I, I, I love Miami. I just feel like I just have a feeling and I have to go with my feelings. I've, I feel like it's time to leave Miami. I don't know why. It's I just, not it's Miami. Like, it's time to leave Miami. You going to LA? So there's two there's two options I'm heavily considering, LA, and it's it's gonna be one or the other, either LA or Europe. Okay. And oh, two, that's right. Two very yeah. different two very different places, and I know I'm gonna move to Europe regardless of if I go to LA or not. I just feel like with me launching Social Snowball and just like everything that's been going on, I feel like it might make sense for me, like especially from a business and connections perspective, to at least do like six months in LA and then go to Europe. I feel like if I go right to Europe. I might be missing out on some opportunity and I, you know, could look back and regret that. So that's kind of where I am right now. I wonder how that works with taxes. Like, you know how to I claim actually, residency, yeah. you have to live at least six months in a day. Yeah. I haven't even looked into it, honestly. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. How what if you live works. five months and then uh, seven, eight, dude, what the fuck is going on with my head? six, seven months in another country because you so you don't have full residency in the united states yeah i don't know i don't know hmm but that's kind of where i'm thinking right now you want to move back to la for sure yeah i have to yeah i hate, maybe it. We'll I hate, be hate that i love la <laughs> yeah i mean that's That'd the thing cool. I, I haven't i haven't i haven't been in la enough to like know why I should hate it because every time I go I have so much fun and just like I'm hanging out with so many people the entire time and it's just like a very surreal like and I'm just like hiking every day like just having a great time so I don't know I haven't been in LA enough to like I mean I could see why I would eventually hate it because of like how superficial people can be and just like the whole culture there is just like very unique and I don't think I, I'm a very like I'm like I went through my flexing phase over two years ago, I'm very, that's yeah, very behind yeah. me. Like right now, I'm just trying to meet really cool people and like have fun times and travel and make good relationships. Like that's all I care about. So I feel like going to LA would be a step backwards in that sense. But at the same time, there's also some really cool people in LA. And there's like, especially with social snowball and everything, I feel like it could definitely, I could, it could definitely be worth it for me for at least like a year, like six months to a year. And then I'd probably go to Europe and spend some time there. And just, Definitely. And then just take life day by day. Like, that, I don't know. That's a really good plan. You know what, you know, the oatmeal cream pie? The what? The oatmeal cream pie. What are you talking about? Like the, it's like a pastry. You get them by, they're like this and it's like filled with custard. Okay. It's like really, really good. I'm not a sweets guy. That's right. At all. I forgot about that. At all. Okay, well, pretend you are. Sure. And you like you really like that. Say like, all right, let's make it more relative. A, a huge bar of chocolate. This is how I describe LA. I just thought of that when you're talking. Um, every morning you wake up, you uh, get presented like a cookies and cream chocolate bar. So good. Next day, fuck yeah, that's awesome. Some of the best. Like this chocolate, so good. But you're forced to eat the chocolate bar every morning. So after a month or a couple months of doing this. Every day you wake up, you're like, fuck, like it's good. I mean, it's good, but it's just like a lot. It's very, it's very rich. It's like, I got it, but I got to keep doing this. And it was so good for the first like overwhelming, weeks. overwhelming. Yeah. Like it's still good, but it's overwhelming. That's why like two weeks into moving to LA, I'm like, dude, I need a vacation. I went to okay. Seattle. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and like knowing myself, like, especially how I'm like very, 
like how I whenever I'm anywhere for over like a couple of weeks, I like get the urge to travel. I feel like in LA, it'd probably be that times ten. I feel like I'd be going out of the country like any chance I get. Definitely, which would be fine, which would be healthy for me. Like, would you ever own property out of the country? Um, yes, in the right circumstances. Like, it's just not something I've done enough research on to like be able to speak on really. Well, Puerto Rico, it, technically in the country, and that's a very unique case. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's a very great area. Yeah. But yeah, I wonder how that would work. You also need, you don't need to own property in Puerto Rico to get that tax benefit. You just have to rent and live there. Yeah. Owning property makes it a little more legit. Shout out tax codes. We love those. Yeah. <laughs> I, want, I, I heard Trump's offering consultation calls really? on taxes. <laughs> Yeah. How much? How much did you charge? I don't know. Chris bought one, so did Chris buy one? Ask him. I think I might have to talk to Chris. <laughs> he apparently got just from one property alone, he got like a fifty-seven million dollar tax credit. And do you, what's the difference between tax deductible and tax write-off? Is it not the same? I'm pretty sure one is. It, I think the deductible deducts from your income, your taxable income, and then write-off. So does write? Yeah. What, I thought that takes out from the taxes you owe. Yeah. The taxes you owe. Oh, you see what I'm saying? Oh, I'm gonna. I get, I'll save that for tomorrow for Chris. Okay, that's a very Chris question. Yeah, that's something I started recognizing recently because someone mentioned something about it being tax deductible, but not a write off. And that, I thought they were the same thing. That's absolutely a Chris question. Yeah. Well, we are definitely over two hours into this. Let me check right now. Oh, my voice memo shut off. Oh, that's not good. I mean, it's at least an hour and forty. So. All right. Yeah. It is, oh, okay, well, we're at an hour and 58 minutes. We might as well talk for another four minutes. What do you want the people to know? Damn. What, what should the people, people know? What should the people know? I don't know. It's a good question. Like what, like all these people, well, I guess not all these people. I mean, these people already know everything. These people know too much. Yeah, these people definitely know too much about too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, after this, I'll tell Sebas to come through. But anyway. The vast majority of people, they say 98% of people are controlled by the devil. So you want, what, you want me to interpret that? No, it's just like I was talking, there's a similar conversation I had with Jared where it's like, they, they say the devil is the negative thought in every brain. The devil is the negative ion in every cell. Okay. So, and they say the devil is 98% of the people under their control. I think, I think like what that would make me think is like, I feel like people are very controlled by fear, obviously, especially in this country with like, but that's the thing is what people don't realize. And this is something I really strongly believe in is that fear is comforting. Yeah. People live in fear because it's a comforting thing to do, which is counterintuitive when you, when I, when you first hear it. But if you think about it, it actually makes sense. Basically to live in fear is to be listening to what other people are saying. And like, obviously like, you know, using the, the most basic example I can, like the media trying to scare you about uh, like a hurricane coming or, you know, I'm in here in Florida, so there's hurricanes all the time and the media will hype it up like crazy. And obviously some of them are bad, but regardless, people kind of are comforted by that fear. They Everyone goes out and buys toilet paper and everything. 99% of the time, like it, it's not it like that big of a deal. Not to do anything. It's, it's just like something about that fear that, that is getting instilled into your brain from a third party source and is making you take an action, like, you know, going to the supermarket, stock, stocking up on food. People get addicted to that. And, like, mm -hmm. I saw it a lot. I saw it happen way more than I've ever before with this virus. Yeah. I'm not trying to say this virus isn't a big deal. Obviously, you know, this has killed a lot of people and affected a ton of lives. But I think a huge portion of this has just been controlled by fear. And the reason it works so well is because fear is so comforting. And then when people are told to be scared, it's so easy to be scared. It's such an, it's such an easy thing to do is to be scared that they just do that because it's like easy for their brain and then they don't have to like think really for themselves because they're just in fear and it's like a, a comforting thing for them. And I think that's like a big problem in this country specifically is that people fall into that trap of just being vulnerable to being controlled by fear. And I mean, I got think of a lot of specific examples just like within this virus, like people that I know that just weren't themselves because of they got so scared. Obviously, you know, you should be taking precautions and stuff, but people got so scared about getting the virus that they turned into completely different people. That was me. Fear controlled them. 
fear completely controlled them. And there's, even though that sounds like it's not a comforting thing, like it's easy to do, it's easy to let that happen to yourself. Like, that's easier than, but it's easier to let that happen to yourself than it is to say no or think for yourself. And like the two things I love to live by, it's in my Instagram bio, is to be radically open-minded and delusionally optimistic. And the radical open-mindedness is something that Ray Dalio talks about in, in his book, Principles. And I think that like to, to be radically open-minded, you have to like, you have to be actively questioning things that you're hearing. And it's, that takes effort. That takes like mental power to do that, which is like exa like pretty exhausting if you're doing it around the clock. And since people are so comforted by just listening to what they're told and not being radically open-minded and questioning everything that like, they'll just, they'll kind of just believe what they hear. And then when it's fear that you're being told that you should feel the easy thing to do is, is to, is to let that happen. That was a great way to end it for sure. <laughs> And that's interesting because you never even read the, the book out with the devil. I've been talking about that a lot, but that's exactly what they talk about it. Fear is the controller and 98% of people think with their, what they think is their true self, which is the, well, there's two, two way, ways the brain thinks, thinking in fear and thinking in faith. Thinking in fear is 98% of people. Thinking in faith are the people who really go after because they they have the faith that what they're going to do is going to work. Mm -hmm. While most people, they fall back on the comfort. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think we should cut it off here. I don't know about you, but my uh, my power is blinking. Mine looks fine. Okay, good. I, I'm hoping we get that. I... You just stepped on it, or did you do some slider? Slider. Moves? Dude, I didn't touch anything. Is it plugged in? Yeah. There you go. Look. Dude, right when we're ending it. No way. I wouldn't even turn back on. Wow. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, before the, all the power goes out, we lose all this footage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, so we're going to end up closing it off right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Can they hear you all the way back there? They can hear me anywhere I want. All right. Somehow that happened. I don't know. That was weird. Thank you, Noah. Thank you for having me. This is fun. Comment two hour, comment end of the video, gang, if you made it all the way here. End of the video. End of the video gang. End of the video gang. Not to be confused with end of the video game. That happens to most people in their 70s or 80s. That's when this video game ends. True. All right. The simulation. Thank God. Oh my God, my brain, dude. Thanks, guys. Jesus. All right. Dude, that was good. That was great. That was good.